So pleasant good morning, everyone. On behalf of Department of Civil Engineering of SVC, I welcome you all for the third program of uh, Pathways webinar series, Building the Future in Civil Engineering, organized by the Department of Civil Engineering. So the main objective of uh, today's program is to provide insights on uh, construction and infrastructure industries from leading experts from industry and academia. So at the end of this program, we'll also listen to success stories of SBC alumni. So I'm immensely happy to welcome our secretary, Professor Sivanandam, and our principal, Professor Ganesh Vaidyanathan, who have been always supportive in all our activities. So I have great pleasure in extending a very warm and cordial welcome to the speaker from industry, Dr. S. Ali Rajan, General Manager and Head, Special Initiatives Nuclear, LNT Construction, Chennai. He has been recently promoted as Deputy Dean, LNT Institute of Project Management, and he's having 31 years of experience in the core industry. So we are very much honored today with the presence of Dr. ESM Suresh, the speaker from academia, who's having 32 years of experience in teaching and research. He's presently professor and head, Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, National Institute of Technical Teachers Training and Research, NITTTR. NI. Let me extend my cordial welcome to him in this occasion. So there are no better ambassadors for an institution other than alumni. I'm indeed very happy to welcome our alumnus, Mr. Venkata Prashant, project engineer, Intertech PSI, Florida, USA, who's going to share his thoughts about uh, SPCE in this program. So I welcome all the deans, HODs, and faculty members of SPCE who make this event a memorable one by their presence. Last but not least, I welcome all the students, parents, and teachers who are attending this webinar and I hope definitely this program will benefit all the participants. And at the end of this program, they will have a complete idea on career opportunities in civil engineering. So once again, I welcome you one and all. So uh, we'll have the first session by Dr. S. Kali Rajan, uh, Deputy Dean, LNT Institute of Project uh, Management. So before handing over the session to Dr. S. Kali Rajan, so I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. S. Kali Rajan to the participants. So he is um, at present Deputy Dean, LNT Institute of Project Management, Larson and Tubro Limited, Chennai. Uh, regarding his educational background, his com he has completed his BE Civil Engineering from University of Madras in the year 1988. Then he, he did his MTech by Research and PhD from Anna University. He's also certified as Project Management Professional, PMP, from Project Management Institute, USA. Uh, he's having uh, more than 31 years of in construction industry. Uh, he has about uh, 26 plus years of experience in Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited and at present is with uh, LNT Construction Chennai for more than five years. Uh, he has received many awards in his career. To mention a few, he is the recipient of a Lifetime Achievement Award 2013 in Savita University for the contribution to the cause of nuclear science and research. And he has made excellent contribution and because of this, he has received a, a Project uh, Management Award 2011 from International Institute of Project Management. And also he has received NPCI Special Contribution Award in the year 2008. He has vast experience in the construction of nuclear power plants in India. He has also been working with various global nuclear technology partners, EDF and Westinghouse. He is leading strategy formulation for the nuclear construction business of LNT in the global market. Uh, he has been uh, uh, the chief guest as well as the keynote speakers uh, in uh, many national and international conferences. He has published many papers and delivered lectures on project management, risk management, nuclear technology, concrete for nuclear structures, and digitalization in construction industry. Uh, so we have an eminent speaker with us today. So now I request uh, Dr. S. Kali Rajan to take over the session. Thank you, Dr. Kumuta. <coughs> Good morning, all. Uh, my first of all, thank you very much for SVC for having invited me for this auspicious occasion. Uh, without wasting much of your time, let me get into the presentation directly. Is it visible now? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. yes. Okay, right. 
so we are going to discuss something on uh, civil engineering and what kind of career opportunities are available globally for the civil engineers and i'm happy to share with you being a civil engineer for the last 32 years and i'm also happy to share the dais with my classmate and friend uh, dr yesam suresh so many of the things probably both of us must be sharing the same kind of views uh, let me get into the subject so as all of you know construction industry is not only about constructing a houses for us or a multi story you know residential complex there are various activities which are normally taken up in a country like india a residential complexes office buildings commercial complexes shopping malls theaters power plants you name any power plant there is a construction involved urban development projects industry upgradation projects river linking projects what is normally you know nowadays it's being talked about by government of india and many you know uh, journalist or many scientist including uh, uh, late dr abdul kalam and heavy constructions like roads bridges uh, dams tunnels metro projects nowadays all uh, tier 1 cities are having lot of metro projects going on including chennai industrial projects like you know uh, steel mills petroleum refineries chemical processing plants so, so you name any facility there is going to be a civil engineering involvement how much is going to be? let's see how much construction intensity is there in these industries so if you take buildings almost 3 fourth more than 3 fourth portion is big, the civil engineering contribution construction intensity is about 76% so this chart will give you an you know idea if you take any industry or any construction any development in the country there is going to be an involvement of civil engineering if there is no civil engineering none of these facilities can exist so civil engineering has been the father of engineering or mother of engineering whatever you call it because we started the mankind started you know roaming around in the forest and uh, eating fruits uh, raw fruits or raw vegetables or raw leaves then they started you know constructing their own hutments and that is how the engineering uh, civil engineering has started initially you know uh, people you know started building some kind of you know shelter for to stay comfortably and protect themselves from the animals you know forest animals so that is how the civil engineering has started and today people don't like civil engineering because civil engineering is a job where you ha you have to strive hard and under the hard sun see our air conditioning is only hard sun we cannot compare ourselves with the it graduates you know who can uh, very comfortably go and work in a uh, air conditioned rooms but one thing i would like to tell you that the kind of satisfaction you derive being a civil engineer and having set up or having developed a structure or a building on your own you get a satisfaction you know like anything i can i can tell you that none of the it engineers and none of the other other engineers may have that kind of satisfaction if i have done a nuclear power plant i whenever i see that photograph of kudanglam nuclear power project my experience has been like in 2001 to 2000 14 years i have worked for that project started from the excavation of the nuclear power plant and uh, you know i completed the power generation the entire cycle of a nuclear power plant i have seen so i feel you know very proud when i see that product you know when the power plant stands like a uh, uh, great giant in front of the world and i feel proud that i was part of that plant and i have done my contribution my my blood sir shed there my tear i mean uh, uh, sweat is there in that soil so that is the kind of satisfaction one normally gets okay so let us see what government of india has got for us so as per the recently you no know, declared in february of course it is just before the covid 19 uh, national infrastructure pipeline announcement government has declared about 102 lakh crores investment in the infrastructure development this chart will show you what are the various industries and how much is the allocation energy road railways irrigation rural infrastructure urban infrastructure industrial infrastructure 
social infrastructure, ports, airports, telecommunication, agriculture and food processing infrastructure. So anything you name in this 102 lakh crores, I would say that about 80 to 85 percent is related to civil engineering. All the infrastructure can be built only by civil engineers. Okay, so we start from the scratch as a civil engineering graduate or as a civil engineering profession. We start from the scratch. We build everything from nothing. You go to a place where there is nothing. There are bushes. There is a you know forest, and you know there is nothing. No, no life is available. I myself have seen that kind of situation when I landed in Kudung Kulam in way back in 2001. There was nothing in that area. I used to you know walk with a stick and you know moving the uh, thorn thorny trees or thorny bushes here and there, and then walk towards you know uh, into the and see where what can come, how the terrain is. So all these kind of things you know we do from our side. Whereas in the other engineering people, like even your mechanical engineering. Or electrical engineering or IT people, they go into a project when the building is ready. Okay, when there is a, some shelter for them, there is some shade for them. But that is not all the things you know which which is there available for civil engineers. But you have a lot of other things which are you know available for you, uh, which will give you a lot of satisfaction. So if you see this hundred and two lakh crores. If you see the 102 lakh crores of rupees, uh, these are the various industries in which it is going to be spent. Okay, so you can see roads, urban housing, railways, conventional power, renewable energy, irrigation, rural infrastructure, drinking water, industrial corridors, petroleum, natural gas, atomic energy, airports, ports, so tourism, except few of the headings. Most of the headings, almost 80 percent, is towards the in infrastructure development. That means there is a lot of scope for civil engineering in this country itself. We don't need to think of going abroad. In our country itself, there is a lot of scope which is going to be there. And this particular development has to take place before 2025. Of course, people who are going to get you know uh, admitted into civil engineering this year, you may be graduating uh, in the year of 2025. So you may say that, sir, by the time I come out of the college, all these projects must have been over. Yes, but this is going to be the starting point for the growth. The country has to grow. Today, we were in the GDP uh, around, you know, four. And of course, because of the COVID, the economy has gone down. We are going to touch one or less than one. So we have to come back. So it is expected that the economy will get, you know, boosted up maybe uh, a year or year or you know more. In that case, whatever plan now up to 2025, certainly it's going to be delayed. That is one side of story. Story. The another side story is this GDP from one, we have to grow up to seven or eight in the next decade. So if we are to grow to seven or eight in the next decade by the by the year, you know, end of 2030, India should be a superpower with the GDP of around seven or eight. In that case, this growth is going to continue and expand exponentially. That means there is a lot of scope for civil engineering in the development of infrastructure in our own country. So let us see, get into the, uh, you know, your own career as a civil engineer. So you need to understand civil engineering is not only constructing a residential building or a house or some, something like that. Okay. There are various specializations in civil engineering and there are various roles as a civil engineer you can play in the industry and there are various market segmentation available where you can think which segmentation is of your own interest and then you can get into it and become an expert in that. And there are emerging trends today. And what are the skill sets you need to develop to you know uh, embrace these emerging trends and then keep going in the uh, industry. So let us just quickly get into the specializations. So you have a structural specialization, geotechnical, geology, transportation engineering, hydraulics and water resources, environmental engineering, highway engineering. Of course, you have railway also, irrigation engineering, infrastructure management, remote sensing and geoinformatics. And my friend, uh, Dr. Suresh is an expert on that. Offshore structures, offshore structure, when I say there are ports, there are, you know, breakwater dikes, there are, you know, uh, shipbuilding uh, facilities, whatever you 
inside the you know sea that are they are all offshore structures rock engineering and underground structures building technology and construction management which is really really growing today with a lot of you know embracing the latest technologies into it and you have you know further specializations like earthquake engineering industrial safety urban development town planning coastal management disaster management and mitigation renewable energy earth sciences nanotechnology and quality management these are all i am telling you whatever you know i know about uh, some specializations but there are many many interdisciplinary and intradisciplinary specializations today so civil engineering is not only about concrete and steel and you know brickwork it is about so many things these specializations of these two slides will give you, would have given you an idea of what are the various areas in which you can work as a specialist tomorrow if you ask me uh, in my 32 years of experience all my 26 years i have worked only in nuclear and another 5 years also i worked in nuclear but in the nuclear business man, business development so almost 31 years of my life i have spent only on a specialist area of nuclear engineering or nuclear power plant construction so i have not done anything on renewable energy i have not done anything on urban planning or town planning so though i am a civil engineer it is not necessary that i should be an expert on everything you can always specialize once you are graduated you select the industry where you want to specialize and join that kind of industry so you become an expert in that field let us say roles what are the various roles as a civil engineer you will have in the market so you can get into uh, analysis and design expert a structural designer or a geotechnical designer or a transport uh, you know transport designer anything you name it there is a design aspect in that if you go to urban planning there is a requirement if you go to irrigation there is a design requirement if you go to offshore structure there is a design requirement so when you say design it is not only structural design even any any facility which you are going to construct or which you are going to conceive as a civil structure there is a design requirement in that so you select your own interesting field once you are going through the b course or you can go to the next level of higher education you select your own interesting field then you have you have to select your interesting role also okay it is not the only field selection you have to select your interesting role also if you want to become a designer you can either go to structural engineering or you can go to geotechnical engineering or even go as a designer in the transport engineering or irrigation engineering any any branch you can specialize yourself as a design engineer and today building information modeling is another area which is you know coming up uh, 3d bim is already in place we'll be discussing about what are the other emerging technologies so bim and take up as a, a career for you as a you know civil engineer and bim will you know involve lot of computer i mean computer softwares designing softwares modeling softwares analytics everything is you know put together today the bim is the uh, solution for the entire project management survey and, and investigations this is another role if you are interested in survey you can become a you know survey expert uh, today laser surveys are happening Uh, geospatial surveys are happening there are many many you know uh, uh, computerized survey equipments are available so you can become an expert on survey and investigations when i say investigations there is a subsoil investigation there is a soil investigation there is a marine you know offshore investigations onshore investigations there are many many investigations available and the investigation is uh, uh, you know interdisciplinary or interdisciplinary you know subject when i say interdisciplinary the many investigations are related to ocean engineering many things are related to soil you know mechanics or many things are related to geo geology or geotechnical so these are all intra you know interdisciplinary uh, investigations but when you say interdisciplinary you have certain investigations which are done using you know electro pulse or ultra uh, no sorry uh, electronics you know uh, signals many things are done using electronic signals and today uh, as of today the industry is using lot of sensors in you know doing an investigation suppose for example drones all of you have seen drones in uh, which is used mostly for you know photography today and the police department but drones are used very widely for investigation purposes in a area suppose you want to build a, a god road or you want to construct a road in a new area or you want to develop a new satellite city satellite township in a new area we cannot go and you know uh, uh, 
do the investigation manually so now drones are used to just uh, allow the drones to you know go around you now you can capture the photographs and those things can be taken into geospatial you know survey uh, softwares and you can very well plan your uh, you know uh, facility then the next area where you can get involved is supply chain management when i say supply chain management the role of a supply chain manager in a civil engineering industry is that you know roughly suppose we are talking about 102 lakhs crores of investment by the government in this 102 lakhs crores of investment in civil structure or infrastructure development there will be 50 to 60% of the money is going to go for material procurement okay so 50 almost you know 50 50 crore 50 lakhs crores of money is going to be used only for material procurement so there is an industry which is going to help you out in constructing or setting up the infrastructure so you you can very well you know get into the supply chain in the sense either you can be a manufacturer of that product after uh, completing your be also be civil you can become an entrepreneur in man- you know a particular product which is going to be used in uh, civil civil construction or you can become a supply chain management expert who does the procurement for the various companies okay you run a company tomorrow you have to procure so many things from so many sources so these things can be sourced by you as supply chain management expert there is another area which is estimation and costing that is also called as quantity survey and project controls so this is very very essential area one of the ma- most you know sought out area in globally okay there are various certifications available after your be you 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 can you know get those certifications like you know institute like rics and uh, there are many other institutes who provide certification on estimation and costing and uh, quantity surveying This, that is another role which you can play if you are good in mathematics if you are good in you know business acumen if you are good in you know calculating you know interest and uh, you know cash flow all these things suppose you have a background of business family i think costing will come just like that for you so you can concentrate on that as a role then the next one is a project management project management is a wide area okay in project management you have planning scheduling you can become a planning expert you can be- become a scheduling expert you can become a networking expert and you can also become a contract expert legal expert suppose after be if you are getting into if your interest is you know good amount of argument you are able to read between the lines and you are able to interpret you know certain things in a different way you can become a lawyer after be you can do you know bl or some llb or some other courses there is a huge scope for arbitration there are you know shortage of arbitrators in the world all over so only lawyers are doing arbitration today the professionals engineering professionals along with the legal background are very very less in number so if that is another area another role one can play as a civil engineer there are so many projects which to arbitration today globally even in the international arbitration you know forum you can see lot of cases pending indian courts also lot of cases are pending so this is another area where you can become an expert on arbitration or a legal expert along with the b civil knowledge okay if you have a technical knowledge of civil engineering and added with you know knowledge of legal you will become an expert in that field instead of being only a legal i mean lawyer similarly you have uh, <clears throat> quality management and environmental and health and safety contracts management facility management is another another area today you must have heard about you know companies singapore companies like uh, you know ascendas or uh, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, cbre like that many companies are there in india who are jll they are all companies who are you know uh, specialized in facility management what do you mean by facility management suppose i am a owner of a facility i am i have constructed a big complex office complex i have hired out to 10 companies all it companies have occupied my buildings but who will manage the facility there are 10 companies all of them will not manage uniformly so there will be another company who will come and take over as a management company who maintains the you know campus who maintains the building who maintains you know uh, the hvac or air conditioning system or electrical system whatever you call within the building there is a separate company who does that job so that is a facility management there is another area which is you know cropping up now as a new area for civil engineers is health monitoring of the existing structures there are old structures aged structures you know which needs renovation now so we need to get into those areas as an health expert okay so you are a doctor for the buildings 
okay you, you are not a civil engineer for constructing only the only constructing a building you can become a doctor of the buildings you 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 should know how to check the buildings you know integrity how to check the buildings uh, strength how how what are the various mechanisms destructive testing lot of um, you know methods are available how do you do that you know testing and how can you inter, you know interpret that data and assess the strength or assess the characteristics of the existing structure and propose a solution for improving the performance so these are the various roles which are right now available and if you take a market segment it's it's only a small list there can be many more there are you know residential and commercial buildings there are factories and process plants there are transportation related you know infrastructure it can be roads it can be railways it can be airports runways you know many things related to transport ports then water water treatment plants and effluent treatment plants a big like you know in a city like chennai how many water treatment plants will be there the population in chennai is almost more than 1 crore and you need to develop you know very good very good water distribution system or sewage collection system totally in you know, a public health system has to be established who will do that it is a part of engineering power transmission and distribution of course it is electrical but the the survey of you know the layout or the other routing of the, routing of the you know power transmission line and the foundation and uh, st- you know studying about the geology of that particular you know route that is a civil engineering here ship building though it is a, you know uh, you may think that it is a mechanical structure but the facility is going to be set up in a onshore or offshore area or may, you know partly onshore and partly offshore area where civil engineering plays a major role and today there is another area you know smart city development where uh, interdisciplinary knowledge is required as a civil engineer you will be planning all the facilities in a city how smartly the facilities can be developed but you need to know how the sensors are placed how that signals are received and how it can be processed how you are you are planning has to get integrated with those kind of you know sensor cameras or the other systems which are going to be placed by the smart city planners so that is there is a you know, composition of interdisciplinary knowledge here construction mining and machinery this is another area interdisciplinary area which the market segment is now working on automation and process automation there is a big problem today that you know you are not able to get the labor force skilled labor force and there is a shortage of you know uh, the knowledge and you, the productivity is lost and the projects are getting delayed and there is going to be you know cost uh, cost overrun and uh, time overrun which takes place so there is a thinking globally to convert from the manual portion to the machinery okay the process automation so during earlier days we used to do excavation using manually you know uh, you you do excavation and do head head loads and then carry it and then uh, dump it somewhere else but today you have poklines which does the you know excavation and then putting into the dumper and the dumper carries and put it somewhere so the this process of excavation and putting the uh, excavated earth has already become automated or already become you know mechanized so these kind of construction and mining machinery industries another area where the concept of you know your civil engineering process is getting converted into mechanization and automation then offshore you have all oil exploration you know uh, uh, areas like refineries or you take ongc platforms or reliance platforms these are all operating within the sea maybe 5 kilometers 10 kilometers within the sea you have to go and set up a platform so as a civil engineer it will be our job to go and you know assess the capacity of the underground bed underwater bed whether it can you know uh, take take that kind of load and then design the structure which can you know uh, stand there against the wind against the waves against the current and you know changing changing currents under the water surface and also the geological requirements so all these things are a civil engineer and today if you see metro there is another segment where interdisciplinary you know works are going on you you are a civil engineer you may be you know designing the uh, station you may be designing the track now again when i say track the railway railway track design it's a, it's called you know rolling load design today we are talking about high speed trains in india when you talk about high speed rails the railway design what we normally used to do for a normal rail will not work out so there is a huge difference in your design thinking okay so uh, 
there also the you know civil engineers along with their knowledge about interdisciplinary knowledge will help you power plants it can be a nuclear power plant it can be thermal power plant or a solar power plant or a hydel power plant there is a huge amount of civil engineering involved and there is a huge amount of you know interdisciplinary work involved and uh, earthquake engineering is plays a major role in all these power plants hydel hydels ports and tunnels that is another uh, market segment geo structure see as as you can see there are specializations now okay so geo structure if you after b if you are taking a geology or you know geotechnical you can get into this kind of market where they only you know concentrate on under the ground structure maybe you know it's a, a curtain wall they may be constructing or you know underground you know piles piling they may be doing for a deep piling or stone columns they may be erecting so there are so many things which are done by geo structural people and that is one market which is you know uh, coming out as a separate market now then defense and aerospace so you may ask you know what what am i going to do in defense and aerospace civil engineering has got you know place in every sector whether you take space whether you take defense whether you take nuclear whether you take you know metros everywhere you have a role to play and you can select based on your interest during your course of be which sector concentrate and you apply to those companies who are working in those areas so that you develop your own interest and then develop your career in that particular industry the emerging trends if i say today civil engineering if you are studying you know be only be as per the subjects what are prescribed by the university is not going to be enough because a few years down the line the entire trend is going to change the project execution trend is going to change project monitoring is going to change i was telling about 3d bim that is three dimensional building information modeling but today the emerging trend is going to be 5d bim that is five dimensional business information modeling i mean building information modeling what does it mean so today for constructing a building we can make a 3d model a lot of you know 3d pictures you would have seen the but normally we do a planning for constructing a infrastructure and also we do a costing model i mean you know, the cash flow model or invoicing model or a cost model that is another bit, bit of you know separate entity which normally prepares so now if you combine all these three there is a building 3d three dimensional building model there is a planning software which does the planning and there is a cost software which monitors and plans the cost all these things cost and schedule and uh, building design gets integrated into one single platform that becomes your 5d platform and from the 5d platform only the project planning is going to happen now and project monitoring is going to happen such a big projects like a power plant or a port structure or a metro you cannot simply do you know manually checking what is going on where it is going on you have to have everything you know automated and uh, uh, set in front of you in a click of a button you should be able to know the next trend is a 3d printing this is another you know interesting area to learn uh, civil engineering structures how you can go for a 3d printing mechanical engineering they have already adopted to certain level some bolts and nuts and some parts of machineries are already getting 3d printed the recently during the covid 19 situation you would have also come across you would have seen that even the masks are 3 3d printed in some of the countries but how can you do 3d pr printing of a building okay even iit madras is doing a research on that in lnt we are also into a research you know to construct you know g plus 1 structure using 3d printing uh, technology and this is going to be the future for you if you are able to do a 3d printing uh, i think there are in russia and all they have done about 1200 square feet uh, size of a building in just 24 hours so this is going to change the entire perspective of a civil engineering construction if this is going to be successful there are certain technical challenges because i i'm not here to discuss in detail about that uh, but there are certain technical challenges which as an engineer certainly we will find solution for that so 3d printing is one area which is emerging now the third area is robotic construction and internet of things as i was telling you uh, getting a job from a labor today is very very difficult once you get into an industry only you will come to know so the industry is really seriously working on how best you can automize or mechanize the and the processes of construction individually this picture you can say that you know robotic brick layer the bricks are you know layered uh, laid by the robotic machine so the robotic construction is going to be the future 
which is you know emerging now and using iot lot of monitoring technologies are you know getting developed now even in lnt we have lot of technologies uh, developed using iot iot right now and laser scanning as, as i was telling you the drones are being used and laser scanning is being used for survey and this kind of you know input which you are going to get now through this laser scanning machines see earlier what happens you do a survey you you know bring out some surveyed map and this surveyed map has to be converted and input to the analysis or designer today the emerging trend is that this scanning machines will prepare a drawing itself automatically and that goes as a direct input to the designing designing platform so you don't need to do anything in between so the uh, one output from one system automatically becomes the input to the another system another platform so the platforms are getting compatible to each other the scan laser scanning is compatible to your design analysis platform so that is how the development is taking place now the the fifth one is ar vr augmented reality and virtual reality where uh, this is going to really change the entire scenario of your construction and civil engineering whatever you are able to develop in the 3d model or a 4d model in your you know office the same thing by going into a site uh, by you know wearing a particular you know uh, uh, glass you can visualize the building virtually how the building will look like where are the pipelines coming where is the machinery going to come is that done is correct or not whether you you are given a opening at this place whether correctly it is given or not so there is no need to take a tape and measure where you need some more people to help you out okay i am standing here you put the tape here so you need two people to catch the tape you know for you and then measure it and check whether the uh, you know erected location is correct or not as per the drawing and you have to open the drawing and then see what is the dimension whether the dimension is correctly you know uh, coming out or not now this ar vr will help you just you just look at the wall and click your you know uh, uh, you know in the glass itself there will be a button you just click that button you will get a virtual picture how the wall is going to be coming up at the final stage and that will get superimposed over the constructed in a wall and you will be able to see if there are any deviations and if there are deviations this you know the glass which you are going to wear has got a capacity to take a snap immediately and then send it virtually to the designer automatically through a mail so all facilities are going to come up and it is coming up very fast the last one is the artificial intelligence machine learning and big data in a construction site as a civil engineer you may think that how am i going to you know uh, uh, you know use this big data can i become a big data analytics in civil engineering can i become an artificial intelligence you know uh, expert in civil engineering yes you are dealing with this is the only industry i would say who which deals with the huge number of unorganized labor force if you see the number of unorganized labor force agriculture comes as the first and construction industry comes as the second okay so reading the minds of the huge number of unorganized labor force that is artificial intelligence and machine learning is going to really play a major role and if suppose in a site you are using say 6000 people are working in a big site and reading the minds of 6000 people and in assessing their health status assessing their mental status that that is artificial intelligence is going to help and this kind of capturing of lot of data which will provide you big data and you can become a big data analytics to you know uh, identify what's going to happen in the site in the next few months or few weeks or next day okay so this is going to be the future of civil engineering so if somebody is thinking that civil engineering is only about concrete reinforcement or brickwork or plaster or flooring it is not that is not the only civil engineering civil engineering is about technology civil engineering is about interdisciplinary you know role to play and you are if you are able to embrace all these you know emerging technologies and interrelated technologies i think you you can become an expert tomorrow even though you are a civil engineer see i am a basically a civil engineer who passed out in you know 1988 but today i can proudly say that i am a civil engineer but at the same time i am a technologist also i am a nuclear technologist okay my my field is a nuclear engineering or nuclear construction so i am a civil engineer but expertized in nuclear construction so there is a there is a difference between calling you as a civil engineer or calling you as a specialist in some area of civil engineering so you need to think in that way and civil engineering as a basic father or mother of engineering has got all the possibility for you to learn the interdisciplinary engineering 
and embrace the emerging technologies so that you can become the technologist in the world tomorrow so there are you know uh, as you grow with the b curriculum you have to develop a lot of skills along with that and uh, you know these skills are uh, as i told you if you select your area as a design there are certain you know softwares which you need to uh, learn if you are interested in geotechnical there are few softwares which are available to learn if you are interested in construction management there are various softwares available so you if you can, if you are able to identify which area you want to specialize so in that area you can develop your skills okay. and there are soft skills which are common for everybody whether you are a civil civil person or a mechanical person or electrical person it does not matter these are the soft skills like you know communication skills problem solving skill teamwork teamwork is a major major area where a civil engineer has to really develop leadership is the one which a civil engineer has to develop because civil engineering as i told you you are going to deal with human faces if you compare yourself with the it engineer if you go to an it office it office everybody looks at the screen and the screen is you know beyond the screen you have a partition or a wall so they never see face to face with anybody anybody else okay they only look at the screen and then work for the entire life whereas the civil engineering we are we, we are always looking at the face to face with you know your own uh, customers your own contractors your own colleagues or your own labor force everybody you are going to deal with them face to face and the leadership skills are very very important and flexibility and adaptability today the project management is called agile project management so the agility in, in in the leadership style the agility in you know managing a project that is the that is one of the skills which are really required well uh, there are few more slides i will quickly cover through and i am not going to talk about higher education because my friend um, uh, dr suresh will be talking on that uh, if anything is missed out i can cover it up later so let me just quickly go through what are the career options available as a job so you have you know there are various government jobs psu jobs available if you take government or psu jobs there are central government there are state government jobs or teaching is another line you can go to banking sector insurance sector it sector as a civil engineer there is no limitation and there is a huge amount of potential available in the private sector also if you if you look into the 102 lakh crores of rupees which i have shown you almost 80% of the projects are going to be handled by central government 20% of the projects are going to be funded by private people so you can imagine how much job potential is available with the government sector so you have to prepare yourself to you know knock the door correctly and then get into the job like in 88 uh, after completing my engineering i knocked the door of brc and i appeared for the interview i got selected in nuclear power okay so there are there are opportunities available you need to know where it is available when it is available so that search has to start when you are entering third year itself you have to start the searching for the job potential okay so if you know the indian civil services that is a group a civil services is not only about ias it has got so many other services attached to it group a and group b services these are the list of you know various uh, departments of central government which comes under the civil services so if you are taking if, if you are writing a civil service exam it does not matter whether you are a civil engineer or a mechanical engineer or even a bs ba holder anybody can write any degree holder can write civil services but you have certain you know advantage being as you know engineer many things you can understand very easily so these are the various services this i will leave it your uh, you know uh, hod so that you can refer it to later various departments are there under uh, covered under civil services exam the next one is engineering services exam so if you are writing engineering services exam after your b civil engineering you have lot of you know demand in all this border road engineering service central engineering service cpwd defense service engineers ordnance factories railway service you know pt and d building works military engineering service of course defense anybody can go but these are all the engineering services which an engineer only can enter and here mostly it is dominated by civil engineers all these departments are mostly dominated by civil engineers so if you are getting into this department you can you know raise up to the top level of that particular department and there are various other departments like you know bureau of bureau of indian standards cochin port trust like that many port trusts are there you know uh, 
மெட்ரோ ரயில் கார்பரேஷன் டெல்லி மெட்ரோ ரயில் சென்னை மெட்ரோ ரயில் கொச்சின் மெட்ரோ ரயில் எனி எனி டயர் ஒன் சிட்டிஸ் யூ நேம் நவ் தெர் இஸ் அ மெட்ரோ ரயில் கார்பரேஷன் ஹட்கோ ஹெச்டிஎஃப் ஐ மீன் ஹட்கோ இஸ் அ ஹவுசிங் அண்ட் அர்பன் டெவலப்மெண்ட் கார்பரேஷன் நேஷனல் ப்ரொடக்டிவிட்டி கவுன்சில் ISRO, BRC, DRDO. So there are various de- scientific departments. There are various departments in the you know, uh, uh, central government which has got job potential for civil engineers. What you need to do is, right now, when you are when you're joining BE Civil Engineering, from your second or third year onwards, you need to look for the advertisements from these kind of you know, comp- you know, organizations, when it is being published, under what you know, basis they are going to select, and how do you prepare for that exams. most of the companies will go for uh, gate score okay and state government of course you have uh, all these departments all departments uh, take you know uh, civil engineers as an intake i think in uh, tamil nadu state you have employment exchange you have to register through employment exchange and then you will be called for an interview but some of the departments you they take directly also in addition to these departments you have in like chennai corporation or uh, you know trichy corporation or madurai corporation they also do take you know engineers directly and uh, there is a there is a planning uh, dtcp they call it you know department of uh, town planning they also take you know civil engineers when you have a teaching uh, aptitude you have you know M, uh, various engineering colleges and polytechnics which are available uh, you have to look for when they are available for you and there are public sector units so many public sector units i have listed you know whatever came to my mind it, there may be many more these public sector units recruit people based on gate score so you don't need to prepare separately for their you know public sector units you have to fare well in the gate exam after your be final year at the time of uh, final year you appear for gate and then all these uh, you know organizations will be calling for applications you necessarily have to apply for it by you know getting a good score in gate does not give you an entry just like that without an application you need to put up an application and with the gate score if you are applying certainly uh, any one of these things you will be able to get through as i could go, get through you know npcil in way back in 1989 so then there are various other companies psus who take people through non gate non gate in the sense they will conduct their own exams so you need to look for these companies and then see when they are calling up okay you get into the websites of all these companies and then you can look for when there is a call every year they take you know certain number of people certain number of civil engineers based on their uh, you know development projects or expansion program so these are uh, some of the central psu psus private companies civil engineers there are so many small companies i have listed some some of the big companies who take uh, civil engineers for uh, design uh, like tata consulting engineer they take only for design okay other companies they take both for design as well as execution or project management or supply chain management see for example my company lnt takes people for design takes people for project execution takes people for you know construction management or uh, supply chain management quality safety all the profiles which i have told you contracts legal whatever roles i have told you all the roles are available in one company like larsen and tubro afcons and gam in india hcc all these companies will have all these profiles so based on your interest it is not necessary that you get into a company only for execution so you don't think that you know you get into any private company you have to stra- you know uh, work hard under the hard sun not always okay it depends on the role which you select so it you can you know look for their advertisements of course teaching you know very well lot of engineering colleges in tamil nadu and there are banking and insurance sector which is open for everybody so i don't need to talk on this these two sectors are growing sector there there are government banks there are private banks you can you know look for uh, bank uh, related exams you can prepare for the bank related exam you can always ask me what am i going to do why should i study civil engineering if i want to go to banking correct it is not a you know a wrong question but if you get into all these banks there will be a portfolio called industry industrial development officer so industrial development officer are necessarily used to be an engineer so it, it is within the bank also what role you want to select that you have to select okay there are opportunity with all the banks you have to select you know where is the role for civil engineer and uh, with i can only share my company's profile with you uh, there are two scholarship 
given for uh, uh, you know uh, people who complete their uh, be one is we call build india scholarship and if you have to appear for an exam which is conducted by lnt in collaboration with iits and this uh, build india scholarship we select four batches about 60 people uh, in one one batch that mean four batches one batch goes to iit delhi one batch is goes to iit madras one goes to nit trichy and one goes to nit suratkal so these all four batches every year the intake is taken in the company's expense you are you are going to do mtech construction technology and management and after completing this degree you will be absorbed into the company roles automatically okay you become an officer uh, assistant manager directly similarly in in the lnt there is another division called hydrocarbon where uh, yeah, this is based on gate score you are directly getting into uh, mtech offshore technology application technology degree you will be you know posted into iit and in the iit you will be studying offshore technology again after completing the technology you will be part of lnt hydrocarbon so these are the two sponsored program which lnt has got so similarly other companies like you know adani or, or uh, ambani's or you know big company tata tata projects everyone will have these kind of scholarship programs what you need to do is you need to get through their websites and then see the possibilities where you, when to apply and where to apply and how to get through okay so this is this is what i want to share with you about the job opportunities of course uh, higher studies my friend uh, esm suresh will be dealing with that so i hope i have given you a, a, you know ample uh, uh, you know information about why civil engineering has to be taken which because it it gives you a lot of avenues lot of opportunities opening you know you can there are so many avenues you know where as a engineer you can specialize and there are so many opportunities available and government of india is coming out with a lot of projects infrastructure projects and there are i would say from lnt you know uh, background we are short of skilled people and talented people there are people available in the market but they are not talented they are not skillful so you have to develop your skills and talents in this four years time so that you become sellable in the market after four years once you complete the civil engineering so it is studying civil engineering for that matter any engineering as of today does not stop just studying your course curriculum you have to parallelly develop the skills and emerging trends which i have listed to you and the soft skills including leadership skills and you know uh, communication skills and all so that you become sellable in the market there will be people to take you and then mold you and then uh, uh, help you in, in your own growth so uh, that's all from me right now madam thank you very much if there are any queries we can uh, Uh, yes sir thank you so much sir and we can have the question and answer session at the end of the program please, um, please. yes uh, so thank you so much for your uh, uh, enlightening speech and for throwing more light on uh, various uh, uh, career opportunities in civil engineering so as you rightly said uh, for civil engineers uh, job satisfaction is more important than anything else and it is really great to see a building uh, which is built from start to finish especially when we are uh, involved in that project so as uh, dr kalirajan uh, rightly pointed out uh, investments are going to be very huge in uh, uh, future in the construction sector so that is uh, going to have uh, definitely a positive impact on the demand for uh, civil engineers in future and uh, my special thanks to you sir uh, for highlighting uh, like uh, how we need to focus on curricular aspects also to cope up with the latest technologies uh, and how to uh, develop the interdisciplinary knowledge among the civil engineering graduates so thank yes. you so much sir and uh, so we'll move on to the next session uh, by dr uh, esm suresh and i am very happy to introduce uh, uh, dr uh, esm suresh to the participants so dr esm suresh is uh, presently uh, professor and head department of civil and environmental engineering national institute of technical uh, teachers training and research that is nitdtr chennai and regarding his uh, educational uh, background he completed his b civil engineering from university of madras Uh, during 1984 to 1988, and uh, after that he uh, completed his ME uh, uh, program uh, with a specialization in soil mechanics and foundation engineering from Anna University during 1990 to 1992. Uh, then he completed his PhD in civil engineering with specialization on GIS uh, for an urban environmental management from Anna University year 2001.
and uh, regarding his experience uh, he has around 30 years of experience in teaching and research uh, which includes uh, 25 years at uh, nitdr chennai and his research interest uh, include uh, remote sensing and gis urban planning and management and disaster management and uh, he has also done some research on engineering education um, so few uh, uh, research areas are uh, instructional design and delivery systems technology enabled learning strategic planning and institutional evaluation outcome based education and accreditation uh, he has guided uh, uh, six phd scholars so far and six more scholars are pursuing phd under his guidance and uh, during his career he has published uh, around uh, 105 uh, yes uh, around 105 publications which includes uh, publication in international journals national journals textbooks and chapters in textbooks then he has also developed education modules and uh, he has also published his papers in national and international conferences and uh, he has uh, produced and uh, broadcasted about 92 video programs which include uh, documentary based video films and short films uh, he has conducted uh, so many training uh, programs especially for uh, um, uh, more than about uh, 300 programs for polytechnic college faculty and more than 200 programs for engineering college faculty and he has conducted uh, uh, 10 international training programs also uh, sponsored by ITEC, TCS and SCAP out of which five in civil engineering domain and five in educational media and uh, uh, he takes the credit of uh, uh, guiding uh, international uh, uh, project works for international participants also and uh, he has conducted uh, more than 12 international uh, uh, and national level seminars and workshops and um, he has completed so many uh, sponsored research and consultancy projects to mention a few uh, he was instrumental in developing multimedia learning package on construction of household lettrins uh, and uh, preparation of uh, hydrogeological thematic maps of all districts of Tamil Nadu then uh, developing video film on fabrication building uh, rainwater harvesting for uh, NITTR Chennai campus developing video film on computer networks etc and uh, he's also an expert member of uh, national board of accreditation mhrd government of india and he's, he's also serving as a doctoral committee member of ms and phd scholars of various university he was also um, a distinguished visiting professor in university of mascarens mauritius uh, during february uh, 2020 he has visited many foreign universities to mention a few uh, ntu singapore ohio state university columbus usa uh, then university of ottawa uh, Technical University and uh, University of Science Malaysia, etc. He has visited many foreign countries and uh, he's also a member of uh, various uh, uh, professional bodies uh, like a uh, fellow of Institution of Engineers, American Society of Engineering Education, Canadian Engineering Education, Indian Geotechnical Society, etc. So we're really uh, very much honored to have you today uh, with us, sir. Uh, so I, uh, now I invite Dr. ESM Suresh uh, uh, to take over the session. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Yes, sir. You are able to see my presentation? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes, it is visible. Yeah, it's visible. My audio is okay. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kumita. Thank you very much, Dr. Kali Rajan. A very comprehensive presentation. He has already made. Uh, about the various career opportunities for the civil engineering. Let me start with a uh, very big uh, question you people have in your mind that why do you require engineering or a civil engineering? When you have so many engineering colleges, are you going to get a job out of these institutions? If you look into I know the very uh, fundamental and the basic question about the GDP. Uh, my friend Dr. Kali Rajan was telling the GDP contribution is coming from gross enrollment ratio. The gross enrollment ratio for our country, if you take, it is only 25%. But if you try to see the gross enrollment ratio of some of the developed countries like United States of America, it's about 85 percent. The Canada and other European countries, about 85 to 95 percent. Even if you see the China, the gross enrollment ratio is 50. So we are only 25 percent. We require more, you know, the people who are in the higher education. 
basically what is gross enrollment ratio it is the ratio between people who are there in the higher education when compared to the school education who are passing out and entering into the higher education so you require more and more engineers that's a very important point that you must have it in your mind but you require more and more employable engineers you have very good job opportunities but the college which you are looking at should provide all the opportunities to you and especially from the learning perspective you get the point when you go to any institution normally you will get fascinated with the beautiful infrastructural facilities and other you know the you know the cosmetic aspect of uh, the institution but what you must look into you must look into the different uh, other aspects of the teaching learning process the curriculum and the assessment procedure what they follow we are actually one of the important uh, significant achievement in the uh, engineering education we have made we become part of the washington accord very famous uh, washington accord in the uh, no the uh, signed uh, india is also the signatory in the washington accord there are 15 countries in the washington accord india has made uh, the signatory in the washington accord in 2014 what is the significance of this washington accord the washington accord uh, countries who are producing the engineering graduates will have the same competence what is competency you no know, people are talking only about the skill development or the knowledge development but career requires job requirements you know the perspective you try to see the competency competency is equal proportion of knowledge skill and the attitude okay so if you try to see the engineering graduate who is coming out of any state of united states of america and the engineering graduate who is coming out from this tamil nadu will have both competency that is a basic requirement of the washington so if you try to see like you know i can give you the simple example kfc can to give fried chicken kfc in uh, new york kfc in uh, tamil nadu will have the same quality of the food or the taste of the food so the same requirement you know from the engineering graduates we have uh, the graduate attributes it's called uh, engineering graduate attributes 12 engineering graduate attributes defined by the washington accord this graduate attributes define the competency of an engineer okay so in our country i always say unemployment is not a problem but the real problem is under employment you require employable engineers so every institution should provide employable engineers that's a very important aspect so you have to see this aspect from any institution when you are trying to get into the admission process okay in my presentation uh, about the six major components many things have been covered by my friend my best friend dr kali rajan but i am just covering some of the basic uh, you know the issues the doubts which you have in your mind i will try to you know actually clarify to start with what is career development i will start from the career development what are the challenges in the career development what is basically the career why should we select the career then how to plan for a career and what are the job opportunities in the government sector and the public sector of course they all have been covered by dr kali rajan but how you are going to plan okay in your four years of your stay in your campus then what are the other options including the higher education what is career development see many career consultants are there you go to them and then trying to do some counseling with them and then try to understand yourself so no, it's a big business today i always say the career development or soft skill development they are all actually coming with the help of your core engineering knowledge when you have a core engineering knowledge i always say it is like a bottom portion of the cake 
the bottom portion of the cake is actually the uh, real carbohydrate part. That you will get from the best part of the curriculum you have it in your institution and in the teaching learning classes. Again, I am coming to the curriculum. What is this curriculum? What is this syllabus? They are all like, you know, the recipe for the food preparation. You get the point. In an institution, when you try to see the infrastructural facilities, I always say the best, you know, the outcome from the classroom is very, very important. Maybe a few years back, you try to select the institution, maybe 10 years back. It was a scenario. The institution which was producing the best results, you pass percentage. That was only the output. Now the scenario is different. It's not the output is not the problem or not the issue. The issue is actually the outcome. What is outcome and how the outcome is different from output? Output is actually focusing on the pass percentage, but outcome is focusing on the employability. Now you look at the institution, which is giving the best placement for you. Who can give the best placement? Who can actually have the best curriculum, the best recipe? And the teaching learning process, it is something like a cooking your food. In the classroom, the teaching learning process, in your house, even if you try to see, I always say, the kitchen is a very important element in your house construction. Okay, the food preparation. Even we spend five lakhs rupees for the kitchen. You get the point. But like your microwave oven, electric chimney, and then all the gadgets. And finally, what happens? You go to the restaurant for taking food not the cooking. So the cooking is very, very important. How the food is being cooked in the kitchen is very, very important. So cooking here is a teaching learning process. So when the food is being served, you have to see there are two types of uh, you know, the institution in terms of curricular aspect. One is actually food is prepared and served in uh, like a thali. All the items are being uh, you know, the served on the banana leaf and you have to choose know whether you like it or not okay this is something like you know the thali in most of the affiliating institutions they have this kind of problem because the curriculum is designed by the university and the food is being prepared and it is being served so you will not have many you know the options or the choices but how it should be it should be like a choice based credit system this is what we are emphasizing cbcs and where it is something like a buffet you can have the type of the item which you like it you can have it and which one you like it you can have more and for your own development so career development here is the ongoing process of gaining the knowledge yes all the required uh, uh, knowledge we call it as cognitive development the brain development we always say brain is very very important yes because the brain gives the knowledge Knowledge gives the power, power gives money earning. You think that money earning is the happiness. You get the point. But that is where we fail. You get the point. So what we actually look into, even if you see the fetus, the small baby of four to seven weeks, the first organ, heart or the brain will come up. The heart will come up first because the God has given the priority for the heart. But we always think the brain is very, very important because the knowledge is important. What I am trying to say when it comes to the competency development, more the knowledge, more the skill, the right attitude to perform the job. Dr. Pali Rajan was uh, mentioning that they require talented people, highly knowledgeable people, highly skilled people, but more than that, the positive attitude, right? Especially in the difficult situation how you are going to handle the situation. Okay, you are going to have many, many big infrastructural projects and the biggest problem in civil engineering, he was mentioning is the labor management, the time management, the project management, risk assessment, resource scheduling, allocation, many things are being actually, I know uh, we are looking at it and uh, we have a very, very limited time in the four years, very difficult to provide all these requirements. Okay, so you need to improve your skill. You need to have the good knowledge. Okay, so career development is focusing on overall development. It's like, you know, the I was telling the competency development. Okay, what are the challenges of career development today? The youngsters, 
they always think that okay i want a white collar job i want uh, you know the uh, computer science engineering branch or i want it because they think that they can perform the job in a closed environment in a air conditioning room handling some you know the international projects where the civil engineers handle only the brick and mortar of the cement like uh, again dr kalirajan is mostly it is not so you have bigger bigger projects which are coming up in our country now the most challenging projects in civil engineering i always classify or the, the broad classification in terms of planning and in terms of you know the infrastructural development for the first one on smart city development there are about 100 and 100 plus cities have been identified we need to develop this city is a smart city what is smart city i'll be discussing later and similarly the next important project is interlinking of rivers it is not like a, you know you are trying to connect one river to another river okay basically you are trying to connect but what are the other you know the subsequent development which you can expect what are the job opportunities that you can expect because of the interlinking of rivers okay basically our problem is actually we never plan for the future you get the point we always have two types of goals in the life one is short term goal and other one is long term goal okay we always look at the broader perspective okay you when you look into the college when you enter into the campus in the college you know notice board you would have seen uh, they would have pasted like a vision and a mission what is their mission okay after 10 years what they want to be and what are the strategies that they adopt in achieving the vision okay this is very very important from this statements you can see how they are going to address your requirement your issues so when you want to plan your future this is very very important you need to plan then we always follow the crowd our own peer group our own friends whatever they say we blindly follow this is a major problem in the adolescent age you get the point in during the childhood uh, uh, days we listen to parents we were being attracted by the teacher even the child you would have seen they talk more about the uh, teacher and about their you know the parents and all that but the adolescent student they are different they are more towards the peer group uh, pressure or the friends they are the people who are actually <laughs> guiding them they think that fine choose by the influence of other don't get into this kind of problem okay okay he is doing it my relative is doing it my neighbor is doing it yes i also want to do it it's not like that then accept the parents verdict or decision by the force sometimes you no know, some children i mean some adolescent uh, uh, you are boys and girls they follow yes my my father is telling that my mother is telling that this is not because if you you were like then you have to take your a decision get tempted by current trends they always think that okay it is a big boom so i will get more job opportunities only in it or at you know the circuit branches it's not like in the core uh, you know the engineering no don't simply jump into any career okay think plan execute then decide then lack of motivation positive thinking Well, how do you get motivated? So you need to have more information, more and more information. You need to understand yourself, your inner feelings. They are very, very important. Your own feelings. Okay. Career is a, an occupation or a profession. normally one undertakes for a longer period of this life time i just give you uh, you know one example if someone is painting the picture picture is a, you know the like painting the picture is a hobby you know for a long time he has been involved in painting the picture okay but he does not uh, expect any uh, monetary reward because his hobby is to just to paint similarly for some people they may have some inherent feeling yes i want to become like a musician okay under pressure i have been you know chosen i have been converted as a civil engineer but still my inner feelings are like a musician so value your feelings that's what i am trying to say so your hobby 
uh, here may not give you the monetary reward, but uh, in the career, if you try to see the, uh, like, you know, when you are painting and then exhibiting the painting and uh, the, your gallery to the prospective uh, buyers, the painting here, it is considered like a profession. So the hobby is different from the profession. So you need to clearly demarcate between these two. Okay. Why should we select a career? Okay. We have been created unique. We are going to live in this world for only one time. Okay. We spend nearly 40 hours of our working years. Our average, you know, the, the age of the life, if you try to see life expectancy, it is about uh, 65, 70 years today. No, the 40 years, 35 to 40 years is a professional life. We work for a company, if you try to see a company or any organization, the professional hours is roughly about 80,000 80, hours. Okay, so 80,000 hours you are going to spend and in your career. Okay, so if you try to see the planning aspect, first of all, you should see what do you want to become uh, in your life. Yes, what do you want to become? You want to become a civil engineer, then you become a civil engineer. You want to become someone, you know, some other profession, you want to choose, you choose that profession. Okay, your inner feeling is very, very important. Value that feeling. That's very, very, you know, the important component I'm trying to emphasize. Then knowing yourself, you explore the opportunities. Okay, like uh, Dr. Kalirajan was mentioning, you have more information in different uh, platforms today. Okay, you have everything in by click of a mouse, you will get everything. Try to go through all this and try to uh, educate yourself about all these activities. And then decision making. Decision making is very important because you are going to take the decision for your life. It's not somebody's life you are going to live. Your own life you are going to live. Take a decision. Take a action on that. Then you proceed in that. What are the technical skills or the abilities. I was talking about the competence. Again, the ability is also like a competency, almost the same. No, the ability is actually, it's combination of cognitive, uh, that is your knowledge, cognitive ability, and the skill, we call it a psychomotor. What is skill? The skill of performing the job, your finger dexterity. The cognitive is something like a knowledge, your brain. Okay, then you are finger dexterity. You try to do it. I just give a simple example. When I was a student uh, during 1997 in the Technical University of uh, Indo and Netherlands, my professor used to uh, handle the subject called the construction technology, he used to construct the wall in the classroom, taking a brick and then taking the mortar, how the mortar is being prepared, how the water is being added, what is the, the water cement arrangement. All these things fundamentally we're just learning, you no know, slowly, but you know the real knowledge gaining, real skill development was there. But unfortunately, here in our system, what happens? We study so many things, we study so many subjects, but uh, we are not able to focus one particular, uh, you know, the area where we want to actually fit in. So you need to have the skill development. You would have seen. The carpenter or the mason or the painters are in great demand. I'm not telling that you should become a carpenter like a painter or a mason, but you should have the basic skills. You get the point. The basic skills required for that. This is what I say, uh, outcome-based education we emphasize. We are focusing on the outcome more than the output because every subject that should be a component of the skill development the laboratory component and the classroom should be integrated. So more and more hands-on training is required, more than the knowledge gain. And then the transferable skills, the problem-solving skills. Okay, I'm coming out of this institution. What are the expectations of the industry? You take, for example, Larson and Ritubro, they expect more things. There is a big gap between what is being offered, what is being taught in the classroom when it comes to the requirements of the industry. So you need to choose the institution, how they are bridging the gaps, how they are identifying the gap, how they are bridging the gaps in terms of providing 
training on uh, you know the various aspects of beyond the, the curricula you know content beyond the syllabus then what are the extracurricular activities see the age of 17 to 21 it's a prime youth age so you have a very high power you know, we have a fully you know the the potential person if you try to see in your lifetime the age of 17 to 21 years the prime youth age you need to learn more the learning curve if you try to see normally we say the school education how we are designing the maximum amount of learning they say learning curve it happens between uh, you no know, the age of you uh, know 0 to 17 or 18 okay then the curve is actually coming down this is the peak time but unfortunately what happened he just focus only on what is actually required it is not so the more amount of time should be spent on extra curricular activities co curricular activities i see many institution by 330 they close the institution they have all the transport facility buses everybody is leaving the campus by 4 o'clock if you try to see nobody will be there in the campus this is what i am observing as a chairman of the visiting team in the i uh, know national board of accreditation uh, no visiting them and then seeing what are the extra curricular activities okay they have very good playground they have sports facility they have all the infrastructural facilities but still they are to be utilized you need to spend more time in your college i always say the engineering education should be uh, you know the uh, provided like 24 by 7 you need to stay in the campus you need to spend more time not only on the curricular aspects more on the extra curricular activities more on the co curricular activities co curricular activities like participating in the seminar workshops present yourself you get the point get exposed and then travel lot it's not only we only inside the country no outside outside the country okay you try to apply for some funding there are so many agencies will give you the funding provided you should spend more time it's not that by 3:30 no you close everything and then go to your home and then finally you know you are missing it it should be residential program then you should understand what kind of personality do you have yes you should have the positive the leadership skills communication skills interpersonal relationship in a team how you are working how you are understanding others how you are understanding somebody's expectations they are all very very important you should emerge as like a real leader real leader of the your project team you get the point if you take the project you no know, there will be nothing sometimes you go to the field nothing will be there you need to actually get all the things in terms of mobilizing the manpower getting the material uh, you are talking about you know the material management all these things are very very important you no know, you need to solve the problem and then identify yourself get into the team and win ultimately and then what kind of environment you like to work in so you always think that you are going to work in the uh, ac room air conditioned room and a very good environment it's not like that you will be working in a area like a slum where you will not have a good a hygienic uh, conditions but still you need to solve the problems of the state okay i was handling a big project on uh, <coughs> slum uh, free city development it was a government of india project we have identified trichapalli coimbatore e road tirunelveli and all that basically we want to have the mapping using geographical information system identify the slum areas identify their requirements provide them the livelihood opportunities because you need to evacuate them it's very difficult to evacuate them but you need to you know provide the best education in terms of providing good job opportunities and all that so being a civil engineer i need to pro, you know have this kind of skill of convincing the people educating the people who are not educated you understand civil engineering is the only field like dr kali raju master you have different types of clients you have a client who is giving the project but you are meeting the people you no know, like he was working in a kurangulam project which is a very challenging the public participation is the biggest concern there you need to convince them people are resisting yes i don't want a nuclear project 
in our country. Similarly, all the you know the developmental activities. If you see, there will be resistance. There will be a resistance against a methane project or a nuclear project. But as an engineer, from this perspective, I'm telling you need to convince them. You need to tell them that the positive aspects of this project, how they are going to provide the employment opportunity, how they are going to protect their environment, because they are all being misguided. They are all being actually, uh, you know, the uh, like you know, they got a different perception that you no, know, their life is going to be, you know, big, uh, you know, the challenging situation. Then what are all your values? It's very, very important. Your values are very important. Your commitment. This is not the requirement, the basic requirement for the engineer, uh, any industry, if you see. What is your commitment? You value your commitment. Okay, this is my target. This is my time. I'm fixing it. This is my cost. You should actually have the project within this boundary. Okay? Anything beyond this, then it will be a big problem for you. There will be an escalation of price. And then material management, your labor management, all these things will come into the issue. Okay, what is civil engineering? You all know very well civil engineering, the oldest engineering. It is the mother of all engineering. It deals with the design, construction, and maintenance of structures, public works, and all that. Today, we try to do the structural health monitoring, fine, even the existing structures. But today, this particular you know, the branch has got infinite scope, infinite. In terms of the project, in terms of interdisciplinary projects, especially, and uh, it has got uh, know the spectrum of uh, know the applications in various areas. Not only the buildings, flyovers. You could see many flyovers for all the you know the cities, town, even tier one cities, tier two cities, even like a city like the Salem. You could see a lot of flyovers. You require a lot of fly know the flyovers because the traffic congestion is the biggest demand because the people they want to move everybody has got their own vehicle and the traffic congestion traffic volume it has got a big uh, know the up uh, you know the uh, applications here the transportation engineering transportation engineering has got a big demand in future i always say then canals you require a lot of you know the canals in fact last 25 to 30 years the in our state we are not constructed big dams, canals, and all that. But you know, the you require water basically. The biggest challenge today for the citizen of uh, you know the city like Chennai, the water is a major issue here. Not only the cities uh, of like Chennai, even all the cities all over the world, the water scarcity or the water demand is the biggest problem. So water resources engineering is the biggest area here that's got very high demand. And then you need to have big dams, and then you need to store the water. You need to have the water for irrigation. Uh, know the uh, know the water supply for your own you know, drinking purpose and all that. Then look at the uh, the areas of highway engineering. You see, a lot of tunnels are being made, and then you try to understand even your LOC, what is line of control, LAC. Okay, all these things are civil engineering application. You say that someone is violating the LOC. You have a GPS data now, very high, uh, you know, the end uh, sophisticated surveying instruments and satellite surveying all there. And uh, uh, Dr. Kalirajan was talking about drone applications. They're all, you know, the marvelous applications of civil engineering, precise, uh, you know, the surveying uh, today. When we were actually studying, we were being taught only chain surveying, even in our syllabus. Today, we teach chain surveying, unfortunate chain surveying, plane table surveying, or uh, theodolite. They are all not being actually used by the industry. They use total station, robotic total station, GPS, and all that. So you look into the curricular aspects. You look into the laboratory facilities, whether this college has got this kind of modern equipment, digital equipment. Then the participation of the alumni. I always say in the alumni meter, how they are arranging it. It is not like, you know, alumni, okay, they are coming with the family and we had a dinner, we had, you know, get together and all that they produce in the SAR when we go for the activities. It's not so. How they are involved in the curriculum process, development process, revision process, in the teaching learning process, in the laboratory facility extension, how their equipments are being utilized by the alumni, how the alumni are being actually, 
you know, they used for teaching learning purposes, something beyond. Okay, the connectivity is very, very important because as an alumni, when I go back to my institution, they all, you know, they say, yes, after passing out, what are the skills that you have actually developed? The knowledge which you have provided, whether they are useful in the industry. No, I say, I was you know, learning only these aspects. I was not learning this, but my company is requiring this. I can tell to my students, I mean, my juniors, they will listen. Yes, the alumni is telling. So you should provide that kind of connectivity. Okay, the highways and tunneling engineering, underwater tunnels, big demand. Okay, so many things are there in civil engineering. Uh, Dr. Palirajan exhaustively he was covering it. Uh, but still, if you try to see, there are major uh, developments in the rural and urban planning. We are in a uh, you know peculiar situation. We never expected this kind of situation in our life. But you see. Because of this lockdown situation, uh, because of COVID-19, the entire lifestyle has changed. You have uh, different changes from face-to-face -face interaction, from conventional brick and mortar learning to online learning. This online learning, online education was like a partial. Okay, I always say the online education or a technology-enabled learning, it should be blended with the face-to-face -face interaction. But I sit in a room and then I'm trying to teach. Okay. And similarly, I live in a containment zone where I'm not able to go outside. I'm not able to use any infrastructural facilities. So as an urban planner, I should plan in a different way. In the containment zones, how you are going to provide the basic facilities people who are to the people who are living. So you need to have a different aspect of urban planning. Okay, you have the population density, these zones, three zones are uh, red in uh, zones and uh, people who are there are suffering and uh, all that. But you see, you have on uh, the other side, you have the land area is more, the population density, why the people are being actually migrated to the city, concentrating only on the particular area because of the and because of the other non-availability of urban planning facilities available maybe in the other zones. So you need to have same facility towards the other area. This is what our former the president, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, Pura project, providing urban facilities in the rural area. So what is happening in the uh, urban area should happen in the rural area. What is what is the kind of you know the job opportunities provide in the urban area, infrastructural facilities, everything should be available uniformly so that people, they don't actually migrate. So you need to have rural planning and urban planning in different perspectives. Then structural engineering, many things he was discussing, and then bridge engineering, hydraulics, environmental, transportation, then the timber, uh, even, uh, you know, the timber construction. Nowadays, we are not using, but you know, Many old buildings, monumental buildings, our own, you know, the houses in the rural area, if you see, timber was being used very extensively. We need to understand that. Now timber is being replaced with many, many materials. Different materials are available. We need to understand the new materials of construction. Okay? We call it a sustainable construction. Okay? So the sustainability is a catchy word. So you need to provide the opportunity for your future generation. You need to provide the space in the earth for the future generation. How you are going to protect your earth. Okay? That's very, very important. We call it a sustainable civil engineering. I was talking about smart city, smart civil engineering. I was talking about big data, IoT and all that. But the other spectrum is actually sustainability. That's a very important uh, word in civil engineering. Then surveying, I was telling that Today, surveying is totally different, okay? You have drones, you have, uh, you know, the total stations, you have the GPS, you have satellite-based, uh, you know, the imageries, high-resolution data. You see, wonderful uh, products are what we have. About 30 years back, I, I always say, the uh, Indian satellite product, our own development was not that much. We are de depending on the other satellites. Only five countries were pioneering like US, USSR, Japan, France, and all that. 
today our satellite technology is very very powerful our, we were depending on iconos you no know, big bad satellite imagery you are buying somebody you know the foreign products today we are self sufficient our own satellite product are highly quality in terms of quality very high quality and uh, the accuracy and the uh, high resolution and the quality wise and the result wise we are very much uh, satisfied with you remember the satellite technology in civil engineering is the biggest achievement like you know the other development which we that kalirajan was telling okay and then geotechnical engineering okay you have lot of tunneling you require uh, you know the metro rail projects many projects you no know, either it will be elevated or under the ground so you when it is under the ground you need to understand what is happening under the ground and when you try to provide the railway system then how you are going to understand the different layers different engineering aspects of the soil and the rock conditions and then what are resources construction management earthquake engineering it's a biggest uh, area challenging area which is coming up today earthquake engineering every uh, city every area is moving from one zone to another zone this is a zone moderate zone to prone zone earthquake prone zone what is going to happen on the existing building and what is going to happen on the new building how you are going to change your portal provisions understand the portal provision execute your construction based on the provisions okay what are the scopes basically for the civil engineers the opportunities exist both in india and abroad my dear friends you must understand this in, in engineering it is happening i study engineering in this country but still i can practice in other countries you get the point provided the requirements i should understand <clears throat> you get the point it is not possible in other many many other professions okay but in engineering it is possible provided you should gain all the required uh, knowledge and then the requirements of the other countries both public and private sectors and then the construction industry is booming like okay next uh, uh, 20 years lot of cities are going to come lot of constructions are going to come and uh, lot of many many new projects are going to come but you need to actually equip yourself to understand the demand so if you see the career uh, options three major aspects i always say field jobs like private sector public sector and government sector okay then the research jobs for research getting into research especially like isro drc dodo and all that you need to have higher level qualification you need to study higher education like you are mtech or mba or if you are entering into the other domain like management then you need to have mba mba in operations pg or diploma management uh, especially iams provide the best path of best quality of you know your education still you can Uh, try after you are engineering be civil you can write cat very well it's not that only mechanical engineering or a computer science engineering they can write it right and then equip themselves for md okay there are specialized institutions like nicma construction management institute specialized institutions on the construction management because you will get lot of project management and construction management aspects from institutions like nicma so further classification in the private sector you have infrastructures highways airports many many new airports are going to come you need to understand how the airports are being planned and then executed various component and then yes is that so special economic uh, zones you get the point where you need to have lot of uh, industry which are being identified this area basically you need to understand the land use map of area because you need to maintain the green coverage Okay, you cannot damage the green coverage. That's the biggest part today. Green tribunal and you are you know the uh, guidelines and all that. Okay, and then construction planning and management, water resources. I was telling building design. Okay, private sector and then public sector. Many things are being covered by Dr. Kalira. Then NTPC, NHPC, Irpan, Right, Sail, BHL, A Airport Authority of India, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, Nash. Okay, NAL and all that oil sector and all that. so many industries i just classify i don't want to take more time on this okay uh, building control surveyor you can become 
a building control surveyor provided you need to understand the nuances of uh, surveying you get the point in terms of the methods in terms of the instruments okay so methods are not going to be changed but instruments are getting changed but you need to understand the requirements of the uh, equipments platforms and all that then the consulting civil engineering uh, civil engineer contracts contracts a big one especially he was talking about arbitration you need to qualify yourself you know to have the best part of the arbitrary arbitration you need to understand what is arbitration how you can actually convince two parties and then you know <clears throat> negotiate with the client and then convincing others and all that fine then the design engineer nuclear engineer design engineer many things you have to learn were indian standard codal provisions suppose you go to gulf then the codal provisions may change many countries you know they follow uh, different codal provisions but still the internationally uh, know the uh, organized codal provisions are there you know somebody has to understand this and then structural engineering then hydraulic and uh, irrigation engineering geotechnical engineering public work engineering transportation engineering environmental engineering and all that okay these are the you know various uh, companies which are doing it okay but kali rajan was talking about various software platform and all that but but many institutions if you try to see their curriculum these softwares are not being actually included in the curriculum okay you must understand this okay they have their own limitations i am not telling i am not blaming them i am not pinpointing them they are not being done but whether they are taking extra care okay this is not being taught in the curriculum this is what not being taught okay but how you are going to equip yourself that's what i was telling you need to spend more time on the skills these are the requirements of the industry so that means you have to take your time maybe uh, you were late evening hours you were weekends and all that okay so nowadays you know the institution they offer okay up to 3:30 4 o'clock i uh, no follow the curricular requirements after that the extra curricular effort or co curricular effort but to check with the institution whether they are providing the latest requirements of the industry you get the point that's what i was telling it is like 24 by 7 learning it's not that evening you can be you know you can fly away you, know, you can go away you can wash your hands not like that you need to actually focus learn equip yourself meet the target face the challenges especially on today uh, autocad e taps just to tell you simple example of the requirement of uh, autocad okay we develop digital drawings previously we were doing the manual drawing any corporation or the municipality if you see in our country they all their records all their drawings have been digitized the paper drawings which were there or they are all being converted into digital medium so all the municipalities are doing it they want to protect their records in digital so many job opportunities are there in the conversion it's called the raster to vector conversion or to be raster you have a paper based map you scan it it becomes a raster it becomes a image file or a photo file you, right and then you need to convert into vector file why that image should be converted as a drawing then only you can do further analysis for the calculations so there is going to be we a big demand on this raster to vector conversion to have autocad uh, e tabs then building information model you need to have the you know the system building systems and then you need to understand how the infrastructural facilities are being planned even we say it's green building concept today you get the point and understand the you know the aspects of sustainable construction you get the point you need to have intelligent building the building can itself change as per the climatic conditions as per the requirements of the you know the client it has got the intelligence you know the ability is being built in the building this and then revit architecture is a very famous software uh, on architectural design so today what is happening the you uh, know the bridging the you uh, know between the architect and the engineer architect the long uh, start through and all that they also do little bit of structural design similarly civil engineer by learning revit architecture they can practice architecture 
that's a kind of you know the bridging today is happening stack pro cad as laxis software scad as and similarly geographical information system it's a big domain which is coming up and you have rga software qga software many software are there and then coming to the next aspect of my presentation maybe the final we are entering into higher education okay after your four years of degree and then you want to go for a higher education okay why do you want to go for higher education you want to uh, target some specialized you know jobs or you want to target jobs in the area of research and development you want to go to you know the a job as a scientist okay uh, as you know the uh, research uh, uh, person you want to do carry out some research uh, you know uh, the many uh, organization they have a different wing for the r and d also okay by writing this graduate aptitude test in engineering exam which is being conducted by iit system once in a year normally in the month of february if you pass through this gate if you qualify in that it's not that only you can enter into only higher education but you can also enter into psc jobs okay uh, public sector unit nowadays they are taking gate as a qualification for their uh, you know the people okay and then the mtech programs offered by iit system indian institute of science and national institute of technology okay and then you can also write cat exam for entering into your master degree in management fine and then you are a ms degree okay uh, in the higher uh, in the uh, i mean as a you know, the uh, especially in the domain of higher education from the other countries abroad okay you need to have a different types of exams which i will be uh, talking little later and then you can proceed further and then phd fine so graduate aptitude test in engineering for entering into mtech and master degree in engineering common admission test cat is being conducted by iams for uh, uh, their program mba and similarly the study abroad the other countries who have two exams one is a gmat graduate management aptitude test for entering into the area of management uh, domain uh, in the abroad then gre graduate record examination which is being conducted uh, by us and ielts international english language testing system for a language testing there are two uh, you no know, important exam one is ielts and other one is tofl uh, tofl is a test of english as a foreign language this is very very important requirement because uh, the uh, especially uh, the countries like you know the us then uk and then uh, Canada and Australia, and they agree. The IELTS is being widely used, widely accepted. But uh, the United States, you uh, know, specifically they mention TOEFL. They also accept IELTS. But uh, you no, know, the these two, any one of these two is a basic requirement for entering into uh, their domain. Okay. So finally, what I say, career choices are life choices. Very very important. because you are going to live as i told you only one time in this world so choose the right career based on your interest not under the pressure someone is dictating you it's not like that take them very seriously understand yourself to be right all the best to all of you thank you very much for the opportunity thank you uh, thank you so much sir Uh, thank you so much sir it was a, a really a thought provoking speech uh, for the present generation students and uh, thank you so much for uh, emphasizing the importance of uh, skill development and also for indicating uh, what are the skills an engineer should develop uh, uh, to become successful in their career so as you rightly said uh, uh, commitment is very essential uh, in whatever profession we are in and uh, Thank you so much for highlighting that also. So I'd like to thank Dr. Suresh uh, wholeheartedly for uh, uh, providing such an elaborate uh, understanding to the participants on the scope of uh, civil engineering in various domains. And I hope definitely the participants uh, uh, might have received a clear and complete inputs about uh, civil engineering discipline and the various job prospects in civil engineering. Uh, sir, I would like to inform you that uh, uh, from the institution side, so we are making uh, regular updations in the curriculum. 
after receiving inputs uh, from all these stakeholders. So on behalf of uh, everyone here, I thank you so much uh, uh, for your informative session, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you madam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. It's our pleasure. And uh, uh, next uh, in the agenda, uh, we have a, a small presentation about the Department of Civil Engineering of SPCE. So as head of the Department of Civil Engineering, I'm very happy to present an overview of uh, civil engineering program, uh, what we offer in uh, SPCE. So, uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, so, I'm very happy to present an overall view of uh, civil engineering department uh, to all of you. So, the civil engineering department was uh, established in the year 2008, offering the civil engineering program. Uh, it was started with a student's intake of uh, 30. Uh, later on, uh, in the year 2013, uh, based on an increasing demand for civil engineers, the student's intake was increased from 30 to 60. And our institution uh, became an autonomous institution in the year 2016. And uh, we have got the flexibility of uh, uh, designing our own curriculum and syllabus, incorporating our uh, latest technological advancements in the field of civil engineering, uh, with a special focus on uh, industrial needs. Uh, so in the year 2018, uh, a choice-based uh, credit system was introduced, CBCS, uh, with a shift in focus from uh, the teacher-centric to student-centric education. Uh, so the choice-based credit system has uh, uh, several advantages. Uh, uh, CBCS offers uh, flexibility for students and allows students to choose uh, interdisciplinary, intradisciplinary courses and also skill-oriented courses that is value-added courses. And students can also choose uh, courses even from other disciplines according to their learning needs, interest and uh, aptitude. Uh, coming to the faculty expertise available in our department, so we have a, a strong team of uh, faculty members who are well experienced and specialized in different domains of civil engineering like uh, structural engineering, applied mechanics, hydrology and water resources engineering, environmental engineering and uh, geotechnical engineering. Uh, three faculty members of our department are uh, doctorates and three faculty members are currently pursuing their PhD programs in reputed university. So with a, a strong team of uh, faculty members and the excellent infrastructure we have, uh, so we are uh, providing consultancy services uh, to private sectors on various areas uh, like uh, testing of building materials, soil testing, testing of uh, water quality parameters, structural design, condition assessment of structures and uh, so on. So our faculty team uh, along with the students are focusing on uh, uh, R&D activities also in the areas of uh, concrete and steel structures, new building materials, traffic model studies, uh, fracture mechanics, water treatment and conservation, and also the foundation design. And coming to the infrastructure facilities, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, Wi-Fi uh, enabled classrooms uh, so that the students can have an access of online learning materials uh, during their class hours in order to supplement the classroom teaching. And also we have uh, uh, seven core labs uh, which are listed here and all the labs are equipped with uh, necessary and latest equipments uh, to satisfy the requirements of the curricula and also to carry out research activities. So in addition to the central library uh, in the institution, we have an exclusive department library with a good collection of books and other reports. So in uh, uh, strength of materials, so these are the major equipments we have. And uh, here, uh, the students will be provided with uh, opportunities to become familiar with the uh, uh, standard mechanical testing methods. And also, they will get hands-on experience to test uh, uh, steel and other metals. Uh, in fluid mechanics lab, so we have, uh, 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 we have turbines and pumps. And uh, the students will be uh, gaining knowledge on the performance of uh, performance testing of uh, pumps and turbines and other uh, flow measuring devices. And uh, in surveying lab, we have the latest equipments. We have the total station. We have the, the GPS also. And uh, the students will be taught various methods and techniques of surveying. And uh, they will also learn how to apply the principle of surveying for uh, civil engineering applications, uh, like uh, measuring measurement of areas and drawing plans, contours, etc. And also, the students will be exposed to the applications of uh, GPS 
in surveying. So we have a, a course in our curriculum, which is called Survey Camp, uh, which is of two weeks duration. And uh, the main uh, objective of uh, having that uh, course Survey Camp is to train the students in order to appreciate the practical difficulties in survey and also to develop their uh, team working skills. And uh, in soil mechanics lab, so we have um, the equipment uh, which will uh, satisfy the uh, requirements of the curriculum. In addition to that, uh, uh, we'll be uh, doing some cons we are doing some consultancy works also. So we have the scope of consultancy works also in this particular lab. And here the students are provided with uh, basic knowledge to carry out the field investigations, uh, uh, especially in geotechnical engineering practice. And uh, uh, here we have the concrete and highway engineering lab where the students will be exposed to various testing methods of building and highway materials. And also they will understand the significance of uh, properties of different materials. And we have another lab, uh, environmental engineering lab, and uh, here the students will get hands-on experience uh, to characterize the water and wastewater samples and to assess their suitability for different applications. And we have an exclusive uh, computer lab with the adequate number of systems and software, and the students will be trained on latest uh, software applications in civil engineering using this CAD lab. And coming to the uh, special features of our uh, CBCS curriculum, so we have uh, open lecture courses, uh, employee enhancement courses, industrial training or internship, and we have some special electives also. Uh, we have value-added courses in order to develop uh, some skills uh, among the students. And in addition to that, we have uh, online courses on uh, industrial business. So this open lecture course uh, is a course uh, where a student has to take uh, a course uh, which is offered uh, by the other branches of study. Uh, so this uh, course is mainly introduced in the curriculum in order to uh, develop the interdisciplinary knowledge uh, among the students. So they can choose uh, the open lecture courses based on their interest. And in addition to that, we have the employability and enhancement courses which are listed here. And the students uh, have to undergo industrial training or internship for uh, either two weeks duration or four weeks duration. So this is made mandatory in our curriculum. And these are some of the companies uh, in which our students have undergone uh, uh, industrial training or internship. And in addition to the uh, regular courses, so we have some special electives also offered up in our curriculum. And uh, uh, so we train, uh, we prepare the students uh, uh, for a job not only in the construction industry, but also in the business management and financial sector. So as Dr. Thalirajan has rightly pointed out, so we have to develop interdisciplinary knowledge also being a civil engineer. So in order to be, become successful in the future. So on that line, we have introduced some special courses also in the form of special electives, and which will which is normally offered or uh, by the external experts. So we have the courses on supply chain management also, and we have included a course related to finance sector and management sector also. And in addition to that, uh, we are offering some value-added courses also in order to uh, train the students on some latest software related to civil engineering. And suppose if a particular student is interested um, to become an entrepreneur, uh, for that also we have made a provision in our curriculum. So we have introduced a course on basics of entrepreneurship development as a value-added course. And in addition to that, uh, we have uh, value-added courses on communicative German, communicative Japanese, communicative Hindi. And in order to improve the design capabilities of a student, we have introduced a course called design thinking in our curriculum. And uh, we are constantly motivating our students for doing the SPIM or NPTEL courses or Coursera courses. And these courses are considered for predatory placement uh, for uh, professional electives. And we are taking the students for industrial visits regularly. And uh, it is also uh, mandatory in our uh, CBCS curriculum. So every student has to uh, go for an industrial visit. So these are some of the companies uh, in which uh, students uh, have been taken for industrial visits. And coming to the students' motivation and support, uh, so our management is magnanimous enough to provide merit scholarship for the students. In addition to that, uh, uh, they're providing uh, scholarships uh, for the students who are interested in sports. And in order to develop the research capabilities of uh, students, so we are providing uh, intramural research funding. And also we motivate students to publish their research findings in journals. So our faculty members are constantly doing that. So their project works are converted into uh, some quality papers in reputed journals. And we provide a uh, career guidance also for their higher studies. And uh, for the students who are interested in uh, 
uh, gate exam writing gate examination so for them we are taking special care from the department and we are providing technical training and support and we have a exclusive uh, a training and placement cell uh, which is headed by a senior professor and uh, they play a vital role in uh, um, getting the placements uh, for our students in both indian companies as well as agencies so these are some of the papers which are published uh, by our uh, students in uh, reputed journals and as i said uh, our students excel in uh, curricular co curricular as well as extra curricular activities and since the inception of the department uh, our department students uh, they have secured 13 university ranks from 2012 to 2019 and as i said previously they excel well in the gate examination also so these are the students who scored uh, um, uh, gate score in uh, gate 2019 as well as gate uh, 2020 examinations so for such students we are providing a uh, a good technical support we train them with lot of uh, um, questions previous year question papers uh, and uh, we motivate them constantly uh, so that they perform well uh, in the gate examinations and they shine well in co curricular activities also so these are some of the snapshots of uh, their achievements in co curricular activities and similarly the extra curricular activities and we have uh, a good interaction with industries also so we have uh, uh, various professional bodies um, uh, to whom we are associated with to mention a few we have uh, the iea students chapter uh, institution of engineer students chapter we have uh, ice students chapter then we have uh, ist also in institution level and also we have been associated with the uh, indian society for hydraulics so these through these uh, professional societies we used to uh, do lot of activities through student civil engineering association and we are molding them to develop their uh, uh, skills in a uh, lot of aspects so we used to conduct lot of competitions uh, in the department level also in the institution level to in order to explore their skills in uh, various uh, domains so these are some of the models which are created by our civil engineering students through civil engineering association activities and uh, we used to conduct uh, programs also through professional bodies so we have conducted many programs in the department level and even in this covid uh, 19 period we have conducted so many online webinars so as to enrich the knowledge of uh, students community and uh, our alumni uh, so because of their passion in continuous learning so they have been successful in uh, completing their higher studies uh, in many reputed uh, institutions uh, both abroad in india so these are some of our alumni who have completed their higher studies successfully in some of the reputed foreign universities and uh, uh, regarding the job profiles of our uh, alumni so they have been placed in reputed core companies uh, both in india as well as in foreign countries so to mention a few i have uh, represented a, a few of our alumni profile in this slide so they are working as project engineers project coordinators and also some of the uh, alumni have uh, got jobs in uh, uh, government departments also government departments also like uh, uh, highway department uh, pwd and tamil nadu housing board etc and uh, some of our alumni have become successful entrepreneurs also so because of their uh, passion uh, to start their uh, uh, own startups so they have become uh, successful entrepreneurs and in addition to that uh, since i have already mentioned we have an exclusive training and placement cell and these are the, some of the core companies which have uh, visited our institution for the on campus recruitment uh, through which some of the interested students have got placement also and these are some of the other companies allied companies it and software companies so i like to conclude here so as long as there are structures and facilities that need to be built or constructed there will always be a demand for civil engineers so if you have any queries related to department so you can visit our website and also you can feel free to contact me at hodc@spc.ac.in so thank you so much uh, now uh, uh, may i now invite uh, uh, ms Uh, Ruby Freela to introduce the next speaker. So we have the next speaker, uh, an alumnus, uh, Mr. Uh, Venkata Prashant. So may I now invite Ms. Ruby Freela to introduce Mr. Venkata Prashant to the audience? Yes, ma'am. So it is my pleasure to uh, introduce Mr. Venkata Prashant of 2011 to 15 batch uh, civil engineering SVC. So after completing UG, he has done his uh, masters in civil engineering. 
with a focus in structural and geotechnical engineering from the University of Central Florida and is currently working as a project engineer with uh, Intertech PSI Florida. So Mr. Prashant is also a licensed, uh, licensed professional engineer in the state of Florida. Uh, as a geotechnical engineer with uh, the PSI since 2017, uh, he has completed numerous projects in both private and public sectors. So including Walt Disney World, Universal Studios, and uh, Florida development, uh, development of Transportation. So in addition to managing geotechnical projects, he is also uh, involved with performing and uh, coordinating lab tests, uh, NDT tests with advanced equipments. And he also has experience in analyzing and computer-aided modeling uh, for determination of uh, settlement of structures, uh, recovery of stormwater systems, and analyzing the stability of retaining walls. So his experience uh, includes a variety of exposure, uh, including roadworks, bridges, pavement rehabilitation, water treatment plant, high-rise buildings, and petrol bunks. So in addition to these, I would like to add a few more points, being an uh, alumni here at SVC. And I, I know him since his uh, second year of uh, UG. I uh, have taught him a few subjects and have had a, a close watch on him as a project guide also. So uh, I had always observed that he was very uh, attentive in the class, had passion towards the civil engineering. Uh, he had the ability to balance his uh, time and energy with other activities too. So he had been very active in uh, conducting the department events. Uh, he had been the general secretary of the student council of the college. Uh, he had exhibited good leadership. Uh, he also headed and uh, was involved in training over 200 students uh, in improving their English communication skills. Uh, he was very much involved in other various clubs of the college also, like the CARE club and the theater club. Uh, so one of which uh, one of the plays which I also had the opportunity to see in the Music Academy Chennai. And uh, he has explored the core field uh, beyond the curriculum uh, by carrying out project work on um, advanced topics and attending workshops. So he has also won first place in the uh, innovation competition uh, for remodeling seismic self-damping bridge. And it's very evident that he has been an uh, all-rounder in college. So no wonder that he was a recipient of the CTS Best Student Award and the Devaki Mutaya Endowment Award for the Best Outgoing UG Student 2015. So I'm very happy that he's doing uh, very good even now as an engineer. So welcome once again, Prashant. I request Mr. Thank you, Prashant's uh, take over now. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I'd like to say that it was a very good presentation by Dr. Kalirajan, Professor Suresh, and Professor Kumuda. A little about myself, I graduated from SVC with my bachelor's in civil engineering in 2015. And uh, since 2015, I wasn't too sure about which particular field of civil engineering I wanted to pursue my career in. So I went, came to Orlando in the United States and started pursuing my master's in civil engineering. And my focus in civil engineering during my master's was in the structural and geotechnical field. I also had a minors in construction management and sustainable development. So during my master's, I was also work, working as a research, research assistant in the structural health monitoring lab. And towards the end of graduation, I still haven't had, I still didn't have a clear idea on what I exactly needed to do. So I started taking multiple job interviews to be specific about five. And I wanted to see which job interview I'd land so that that would decide my career. Not the best option, but that's what I decided to do back then. Unfortunately for me, I did land all five of them. I had two offers from geotechnical one from structural and one from steel infrastructure logistics company that was typically involved in fabrication. So a very simple logic that I used was whichever company was doing well back at that time and paid the most. I chose that company, which was Intertech PSI, which specialized in geotechnical engineering. They also provide other building construction services, but I took a position with the geotechnical engineering department. So at that, I know the prof I mean the professors and 
Dr. Kalirajan spoke about different options that are available to you in the field of civil engineering. But I thought I'd focus on how to improve your hire ability when you are actually looking for a job. The first thing, which is kind of like very obvious to anybody is to do well in your academics. And that's like really important, no matter what others would tell you. Even if, you know, no matter what you have, it's very important that you have a good academic background. But at the same time, you should be aware that even if you have a strong academic background, there would be so many people along with you with very similar grades who are applying for the same job. So you have to work on distinguishing yourself between others, not just because you want to get a job, but also because you want to be a better individual, not just do the basic minimum to get a job. So the first thing I would recommend is to improve your confidence. So back in 2011, when I started my undergraduate degree, I realized that I was very nervous in communicating with others, especially, I mean, specifically public speaking, when I had to address a large crowd or a group of people, I started to get really nervous and started, you know, start to stumble. I'm kind of doing that right now, but I've actually managed to get it under control a lot during my college period and afterwards. There are certain things that I've done in college that have helped me become what I am today. So in contrast to having a master's degree or just a good GPA, I think there are a lot of things I did right in my undergraduate degree that gave me that higher ability, which I want you people to have as well. So the first thing, like I was telling you, was really important to have good confidence. And that confidence should be ex exemplified in your ability to communicate with others. So when I first joined SPC, I joined a club called Speakers Forum. That's actually given in, like, if you look, look at the board, that's the room where we used to meet and actually practice group discussions and debates and other speaking related activities. When we first start, started off, we had about 10 people in the club and our motivation or our aim was to like keep growing the club and then start, you know, helping others to grow their confidence as well and just making it better. That's like a few of us that were in the club back in that time. We slowly started, you know, going to other people in the college and tell them, hey, uh, you need to improve your communication as well and trying to tell people the importance of communi communication. And we started picking up the number of you know participants in the club for two reasons. One is we wanted to help others. And the second reason is if you have a larger crowd, you feel no more nervous and it'll kind of make you better. So it was a two way goal that we were trying to achieve. And thank God for us, we became a big team and fortunately a good opportunity came up. Cognizant Technologies Solutions, CTS, came up with a good idea of helping Tamil medium students communicate better in English. So they started an initiative called the mentorship program. So what was speakers forum then started you know, bifurcating into mentorship program where we started getting students like coast, I mean, other students to train Tamil medium students to improve their communication skills. Just by doing this, we started meeting a large number of people people from Cognizant, HRs, and even to this state, we're good friends with them. And they have taken other positions elsewhere. And it's nice to have those connections. So that's another picture. It's the club getting, kept getting bigger. And, you know, we just really started having fun in terms of, you know, helping others as well as improving ourselves. After we, we were doing the speakers forum, people from other clubs started noticing us saying that, okay, you guys are really passionate about doing this. How about, you know, uh, joining other clubs too? Though we were not really keen on joining other clubs, there was this one particular club that we were really interested in, known as CARE. 
concern awareness and responsibility for the environment where we got in and you know did projects for the environment so this particular picture that you see was for the turtle hatchery where we release the hatchlings turtle hatchlings into the beach so that their population is you know maintained in the world public speaking is one particular skill that's very important but that's another strong skill that you need to develop is interpersonal skills the ability to gel with well with others work as a team and bring the best amongst everybody which is like a strong team person quality and eventually as we progressed we also like started becoming becoming an active members of care which is concern awareness and responsibility for the environment we started going to beaches started picking up trash trying to raise awareness amongst others to not litter the beach and make it a horrible place though i was not a very strong proponent of protecting the environment by joining causes like this towards you know after a few months i started developing that need to protect the environment thanks to like minded people who were helping me along the way and also helping others to go in the right direction and once we started going into care we took up many other initiatives so to do be smart about how to let all other students know to let faculty know let the campus becoming a greener campus we started this junk art initiative where we put up you know all these really broken stuff made some art out of it and then you know tried educating people about how to make the campus a better place so that was a broken silencer and i think and then we just with the help of the instructor there we put up this uh, it's actually supposed to be a road runner but it doesn't look like anything like a road runner but we it ended up looking like that looks a little horrifying but if you see it in campus you saw it here first and then that's another uh, item we prepared with all the recycled pens that were used and thrown we just picked them up from dustbins and then made that pen just as an indicator to people that if all of us move to more recyclable pens like ink pens that we could help to protect the environment better amongst these interpersonal skills was theater for me where we learned to control our body language along with just communicating well we did a couple of plays i directed one of them and i think to date we're doing really well and then still staging plays in the music academy and other good venues i think in engineering having the ability to do this is really nice and just apart from these clubs i feel one good opportunity that you will have at svce is the ability to hone your leadership skills or becoming a good leader you have the opportunity to contest in class representative elections rather than just you know a teacher picking up one person or just one person just randomly becoming you actually have to contest for elections and then win your class representative elections once you do become a class representative you have the opportunity to you know uh, interview for a position in the student council so in shortly after i think in my third year i was i got the opportunity to serve as the general secretary for the student council that was our meeting with the alumnus serving as a general secretary i learned a bunch of skills how to negotiate with people both the students and the management and how to you know come to resolutions because you know typically management is not wanting to uh do everything that you ask for because you know they, we are academically oriented and students obviously want to have more freedom so you have to play a negotiator and then learn some negotiation negotiation skills as well as le learn to be a good leader along the way so i feel in svc one of the really important things that i feel you learn from apart from engineering is to improve yourself as an individual improve your confidence improve your interpersonal skills and the ability to make yourself a good leader and all of that 
while you still have fun is a great thing and that wouldn't be possible without the management and the department ruby ma'am i still remember like how supportive she was throughout my undergraduate career and all of the faculty as well who were very understanding and very supportive of everything we did and the management as such is very supportive which i feel has given me a lot of confidence in where i am today and i'm doing pretty well one thing that i want for you is that when you do sit for an interview or any position as such at the end of it i want you to be able to say you're welcome you know you shouldn't be like oh yeah thank you for the job if not you i wouldn't have found anything else but rather say welcome because you are going to be a great asset for the company so if you are a good leader have strong interpersonal skills and have great confidence you're going to be an asset and that's what companies need so make yourself an asset not just by getting strong academic skills or learning a couple of softwares but being a good individual so that you know you are easily hireable one more person that i strongly think if you are considering joining svc is definitely consult dr muruguel who is the hod of the humanities department he was also like my mentor in my undergraduate career and guided me all along the way if there is a couple of suggestions that i'd give you for your college life and your undergraduate degree is one is enjoy it it lasts for a very short time and you want to make the most of it the second thing is make sure you take better pictures than i did so that when you have to give a presentation like this you don't have to scramble and uh, you know put all the worst pictures that you can find and a caveat is if you have if camera phones are not allowed make sure you don't get caught that's about it hope you have a great career ahead of you good luck and please don't hesitate to contact me if you ever need anything thank you thank you mr vector prashant for joining with us today to share your experiences with the svc and thanks to you that uh, you have shared uh, how you develop yourself and how svc helped you to develop your skills so thank you so much for your presence today and uh, thank you ma'am appreciate the opportunity yes thank you so much and uh, so the next uh, we would like to share uh, the thoughts of uh, some of uh, some more uh, alumni of civil engineering department with you uh, through a video I am Pradeep. I am the managing uh, director of Hegran Foundations. I did my BE Civil in the year 2012-16. SPC was the first milestone I achieved in the pursuit of my career. And then, in four years of my graduation, uh, I walked through uh, many different aspects of uh, life. The key towards one's success in professional life is the place where you study. my college uh, gave me a lot of learning about it and uh, also played a very important role in the development of my career and uh, other than academics my department provided all kind of uh, support to many extracurricular activities now i started my business as a property developer in chennai and uh, my continuous interaction uh, during college days and now with my college uh, faculties help me to think independently and uh, enlarge my view of my professional career and i'm thankful to my parents and uh, svc for molding me for years to reach at this level the only message i'd like to give you is that the people who have succeeded in life must or will have a very good faculty behind them and my college has it thank you hello everyone my name is arles raboni i have completed my be civil engineering from scce in the year 2018 the next year i have appeared for tnpsc group on exam and secured state rank 18 and i am the second person to choose deputy superintendent of police in tamil nadu police services i chose scce because of its excellent track record the department of civil engineering 
is unique with friendly and motivating faculties. Studying civil engineering has offered me a competitive advantage in my civil services examination. Because leaving the construction and design aspects, there are other subjects such as environmental engineering, agriculture and irrigation, traffic and highways, disaster management, waste management, etc., which are very essential for a civil servant. My life at SCC is quite remarkable. It provided space to the student to become independent. It gave an excellent platform to discover new opportunities. And I believe in the upcoming years, the SCC will play a very significant role. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Dachin Kalash and proud alumni of SVC. I graduated B Civil Engineering in, at the year 2016 and then I did my postgraduate in Masters in Human Resource Management. Currently I am put up as a state HR for M&M Group. And uh, talking about SVC, uh, it was a very good platform for me, more uh, academic as well as through uh, co-curricular activities. So I used to play basketball for uh, Tamil Nadu team. So here I could spend more time on the field and improve my skills from the facilities they provided. And uh, in academic wise, we were able to showcase our skills, our creativity through many forums and uh, many competitions that were held in the college as well. So I would recommend uh, our friends or relatives to SEC as it provides you with uh, very good facilities and helps you to grow much higher in life. Thank you. Hi, I am Jay Venkat Sujit. I just completed my BE Civil Engineering in Sri Venkateswara College of Engineering. My experience in SEC is that the college allows you to showcase your talent in whatever field it may be, either in academics, sports, cultural activities, etc. And it has a lot and lot of club activities, including the photography club, the Leo club, etc. Which in addition gives you little talent in you to the open world. Last but not the least, SVC is filled with greenery, which keeps your mind fresh and active throughout the day so that you can think in various aspects, either in academic, sports and cultures, etc. SVC is well equipped with facilities that brings out a lot of lot in us. The homely environment, cooperative seniors and dedicating teachers makes the fresher students feel that they have chosen the best college for their undergraduate degree. SVC conducts a lot and lot of mentoring activities from which you can gain knowledge from the most knowledgeable persons coming into the campus. Also, the college has an excellent experienced set of faculties in all the departments. SVC has specialized department for sports and, and it has highly highly specialized uh, faculties for the for the physical training. Being the college team captain for two years, I assure you that sports is sports will play an integral part in your college career. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sita. Recently, I cleared the TNPSC Group One Civil Services exam, and I've been selected as the Deputy Superintendent of Police or the DSP. I graduated in civil engineering from Sri Venkateswara College of Engineering in the year 2016. Civil department is a very friendly department, a good foundation to civil engineering, regular symposiums, industrial visits, supportive faculty, a lot of good friends and a lot of exposure is how I would uh, describe my college life. Civil uh, engineering has a close link to civil services. The places where we were taken for industrial visit like the Pony Reservoir, places where I attended in plant trainings like the airport, harbor, solid waste plant, uh, solid municipal solid waste management plant, etc. They're all public utilities and uh, they serve the common people. Serving common people interested me. So I could have been an engineer or an administrator. I decided to be an administrator and uh, today I stand before you as a civil servant. I thank my college and uh, especially my department for giving me a lot of opportunities to grow and to become a better person. Thank you once again. Uh, so almost uh, we have come to the end of the program and uh, so next we have the quest, uh, question answer session. So. 
so we have a few questions uh, uh, in the chat box So the first question, I think uh, uh, we have got few, a few questions during the registration process itself. And the question is that, uh, how is the future of uh, civil after COVID-19 pandemic? Well, uh, this is a very relevant question at present. Uh, after COVID-19, as I was telling you, the economy has gone down and the economy has to come up. So to bring the economy automatically the infrastructure has to grow the so infrastructure development cannot stop maybe there can be a, a gap of uh, three to six months time but certainly the infrastructure has to catch up so as far as civil engineering is concerned the covid 19 is going to really dictate one particular thing in civil engineering uh, arena is that domination of technology oriented execution model so like we are every every other industry like it industry they are now able to work from home whereas civil engineers cannot do that work from home the civil construction has to happen really realistically at the site so this kind of situation is pushing us to the end to think of how best you can go for an automation how best you can you know exploit the technology to reduce the manpower still you can complete the construction work so this is going to be the challenging period for us to really you know bring out the best out of them and interdisciplinary inventions and discoveries are going to happen in civil engineering so it's going to be a wonderful time for civil engineers post covid situation uh, yes sir uh, thank you sir and we have a uh, so how to improve my practical knowledge again this was a question which was uh, asked during the registration process itself in the registration uh, form so how to improve the practical knowledge see i would say like you uh, know uh, you have to uh, understand what you want to learn uh, simply telling practical knowledge does not you know give you an idea of what you want to learn uh, there are some other questions also related to this that you know uh, how do i get a job after four years immediately after four years whether i i can get a job you know i i just read whether i can get a job immediately after four years so the practical knowledge is something different from practical skills knowledge is only you know an information which you grasp into your brain but skill is that information becomes your knowledge and then you convert that knowledge into your skill your ability your capacity to exploit that knowledge so unless and until the practical knowledge whatever you are planning to get if you are interested to convert it into a skill you are not going to gain that knowledge at all so your aim should be to obtain a skill rather than obtain a knowledge practical knowledge so if you are deciding on a skill the knowledge will be knowledge is available potentially available everywhere and today every one of you are you know carrying a mobile phone smart mobile phone all knowledge is available in a click of a mouse or in click of a finger so it is all the more important for you to know where the information is available and how you can convert that information into your skill very important now knowledge is not at all important knowledge you will get uh, you know any point of time today it, during our olden days you know we have to go to the library and search for the relevant books and uh, you know uh, you should have a library card to, to get the books issued and all today everything is available free of cost you know at a click of a finger so knowledge is available information is available you should have the aptitude to convert the information and knowledge into skills the skills are only going to help you to get a job immediately after four years as rightly said by the first alumni you know uh, unless and until you develop your own skills your hireability is going to be very remote that is very very clear and uh, we have a speci uh, specific question uh, about placement in lnt sir what are the ways for getting a uh, uh, placement in lnt after peter got two years uh, having two years experience i have already given during the presentation one slide that see lnt has got various kind of placement uh, you know uh, recruitment process one is they go for the campus interviews and campus interviews uh, are limited to certain kind of uh, 
top notch colleges and probably spc i believe it is there in the list the second option is i have given you build build india scholarship scheme and don't more scholarship scheme you can appear for those you know apply for those uh, scholarship schemes appear for an exam and interview and get selected that is another way of getting into it the another recruitment process is like you know you work with some other standard company for 2 to 3 years after 2 to 3 years you can get into lnt as a regular employee also that option is also available but immediately after uh, graduation the, unless and until you have the capability to perform in the interview it's very difficult to get into a company like lnt i had been uh, uh, you know campus recruiter for lnt for uh, uh, colleges you know where uh, at me uh, very very famous colleges i don't want to mention the name of the college i could find that people are not at all capable of even answering a simple basic questions okay so you need to know a b c d of engineering if i'm going to ask you uh, after graduation of uh, from civil engineering if i'm going to ask you what do you mean by concrete and if you are not able to define what is a concrete how do you expect lnt to recruit you so it is not that you know you should be you know all rounder you are as rightly said by the alumni academically you need to be on the top that is very clear even if you go to any other public sector undertakings see uh, every undertaking will look for the basic knowledge i tell you my own experience somebody has asked you know uh, whether the college in which you are studying is important or not i have i have studied in a you know we are uh, myself and dr suresh we both are from the same college and we both are from the same batch from a self financing college and 1984 the self financing colleges were just started in tamil nadu there were 10 self financing colleges only other than seven uh, government college government aided colleges so we were the first batch of the self financing colleges but today you can see our position and after coming out of my college i attended brc interview and then got selected in ncil so nobody is looking at you know which college you are coming from they will look at your academic qualification i was the i was the university topper that that time in 1988 so because just because i was a university topper i could not get any private job everybody whom so i met in chennai that time they just see my certificate that they say that you know within 3 months you will leave my company so we don't want to give you a job we want somebody you know who can continue with our company so finally i got through brc and then got into npcl nuclear power projects so if you have the academic records there is a job for you always if you are poor in academic you have to strive hard to get into your you know knowledge and skills maybe in a practical skill on particular area and get a job for in that area that is my advice to you uh, yes sir thank you sir and uh, and uh, uh, one participant was asking about the lnt road work project uh, lnt road road work project uh, in which state it is going on in india uh, it is there uh, you know in many states in northern states we do lot of road projects uh, metro projects we do lot in, even in chennai we are doing metro project cochin metro we have done uh, lucknow metro we have just completed hyderabad metro is going on mumbai metro is going on uh, so the transport uh, transportation you know system we are always in and airports mumbai new airport we are going to do the delhi new airport we are doing now so transportation is you know covering all these areas and lnt is very well into it yes sir uh, thank you sir uh, um uh, there is another question is there a hostel in spc yes we have the hostel facilities and uh, since we are running out of time if you have uh, uh, more specific questions related to the institution or um, the department uh, so you can mail those questions to um, hodce at uh, uh, spc.ac.in so that uh, we will answer your queries uh, through email and um, and hope uh, all the questions are raised by the participants were answered and uh, we have come to the end of the program and uh, and hope uh, there are no other questions so may i now invite uh, uh, dr p venkateshwar rao professor of civil engineering department to uh, deliver word of thanks uh, yes madam uh, good afternoon everyone it's my great pleasure to deliver a word of thanks on behalf of department of civil engineering svce on this webinar session 
I would like to thank our management for conducting this webinar session on SVC pathways, building the future in civil engineering. I want to thank our respected secretary, Professor M.S. Sivanandam, respected principal, Professor S. Ganesh Vajanadhan, for the initiation of this webinar series. I would like to thank manager, Mr. S.M. Arun Prakash, for planning this webinar series and his efforts for making this event to happen successfully. I like to thank general manager and head special initiatives nuclear of LNT construction Chennai, Dr. S. Kalirajan, for his valuable and very informative speech uh, and for the time spent with his, uh, in spite of his busy schedule. He explained why civil engineering has to be taken through uh, his uh, enlightened speech. He shared uh, uh, the Kodankulam uh, nuclear power plant construction experience from 2001 to 14 years. And he also shared about Government of India investment plan up to 2025, one or two lakh crores. And he also shared about various sub specializations of civil engineering, project management, market segmentation, engineering trends, skill development, software, government jobs, and private companies, banking sector, and higher education India from LNT, etc. I would like to thank uh, Professor and Head of Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, National Institute of uh, Technical Teachers Training and Research, Dr. ESM Suresh, for his informative speech and for the time spent with us in spite of his busy schedule. And he shared about uh, career opportunities for civil engineering, building the world, importance of curriculum teaching uh, learning process, challenges of uh, career development, explained that today's uh, generation students are not planned for future and how to plan for the career and what is the civil engineering and major fields of civil engineering, scope of civil engineering, career opportunities of civil, for civil engineering and higher education. And he also mentioned about uh, nowadays students are uh, leaving the campus by 3.30 in most of the colleges, but here in our college we have the facility, even the people can stay uh, even after uh, three thirty, they can uh, spend time uh, for the uh, co-curricular, extracurricular activities, and for the even for libraries also available uh, for their improvement. And now, I would like to thank our HOD, Professor R. Muda, for arranging the speakers and for her nice presentation about the department. I would also like to thank our department faculty, Mrs. Uh, Ruby Freya, for arranging the alumnus speaker. Uh, I'd like to thank our uh, BE Civil 2015 batch alumnus working as a project engineer at uh, Intertech PSA Florida, USA, Mr. Venkat Prashan, for sharing his thoughts about how to improve your higher abilities uh, to the very young minds who want to take civil engineering as a career path. I thank our alumni for sharing their experience. I must, uh, I must not forget to thank our department uh, mem uh, faculty members who indirectly contributed uh, in, in organizing this webinar. I would like to thank you all uh, students, participants, and parents for making this event a grand success. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ra, for your vote uh, of thanks. So I think uh, we have uh, come to the end of the program. and uh, So we have a few more questions on the chat box. Uh, and the Corbin Agent Sir has already answered a few questions. So if you have uh, any more questions, you can contact me at hodc at svc.ac.in. And you can visit our website also for uh, more details regarding the facilities offered in the institution. So on behalf of every SBC, I thank everyone. I thank all the speakers and all the participants uh, for your uh, patient uh, listening uh, to the webinar. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you very much. Thank you. Wish you all Thank the best you, to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, sirs. Thank you, sirs.